And welcome back to the Corral Center in Ottawa, Ontario, as we are almost set to get this one underway in high definition on Sportsnet this afternoon as we get a look at the starting goaltenders brought to you by ADT, always there. And when it comes to Toronto and Ottawa, it seems that Danny Batacho out of Sudbury, Ontario, is always there for Brian Kilray. He's played the first two games uh, in the teams, in the games that these two have met this year. As far as the St. Mike's Majors are concerned, he's the number one goaltender. Justin Peters told us yesterday even he's waiting to play like one. Yeah, and he hasn't played up to his potential yet. He knows it, but he's still waiting for it to come. Out of Blythe, Ontario, there's Ian Smith, along with Peter Coleman and Steve Corleone, who will look after this afternoon's game at the Corral Center. The Majors, the home team this afternoon against the visiting Ottawa 67s, which you won't hear that often at the Corral Center. Such is the case. The first dump in by Toronto. Darrell Boyce first there for St. Mike's. Power against the end boards, taken out by Will Colbert. St. Mike's with good possession, bouncing puck in front, clear to the side boards. Right wing in the Ottawa zone. Majors with possession, halfway up the boards. Some crowded confines right now as the Majors run into one another. And they will hold it for a face-off. And we see right away that the Majors have inserted Alexei Ivanov in the lineup. But there's the man that everybody talks about when you talk about the CHL. Forget just the OHL, Sam. A thousand plus wins. I mean, it's unbelievable. In his third stint now as the coach of the Ottawa 67s, left to the NHL a couple of different occasions, but he loves his junior high. Whiteley can't keep possession at the point. And Lucas Kaspar, the San Jose Sharks draft pick moves that puck out over center ice, but we have a whistle. And there is Bud Stefanski, who we spoke with yesterday at length about his hockey club, a team that even he is a little bit frustrated with right now. Yeah, and it was a tough situation for him to come into. Dave Cameron, the coach of the majors the last four years, left to take the Binghamton job, and that didn't leave Stefanski a lot of time to get acquainted with his new team. 67's having trouble getting the puck out of their own end to start here in the first minute of play. At the Corral Center, Di Benedetto for the Majors on the forecheck. Still trying to move it outside the line. 67's unable to do so. Nice job by St. Mike's working the right boards. Di Benedetto will chase after it. Getting there first, though, Nick Van Erp, the former Mississauga Ice Talk. There's a loose puck in front shot just wide. Majors with great pressure as they continue to move that puck. And we haven't seen a lot of puck movement like we have here this afternoon out of St. Mike's, although, to be fair, playing out of the small ice surface in Toronto compared to the Corral Center, Sam, they're probably enjoying this look here today. Yeah, getting a lot more ice, the 180 by 80 in Toronto. Just doesn't make the cut. There's a pass on the far side. Kaspar over the line, trying to go through the legs of Ryan Wilson. That didn't work. And Di Benedetto takes a big hit as he clears the puck the length of the ice. No touch icing in junior hockey. And the faceoff will come back down into the Toronto end. Justin DiBenedetto, the rookie, and one of the things he talked about in yesterday's skate was the fact that not only is the game a little faster, but a little more physical. And Brian Bickle gets in there and bangs the rookie around and lets him know that, hey, we're in the four-check and four-check card to start this game. Ottawa tried to draw that face off back, but it goes all the way back to their own red line. Back after it, Brody Barrett has trouble with the puck, and Matt Halishek, named to the Ontario under-17s team, first there for St. Mike's on the forecheck. Halishek comes away with it, trying to walk out front, does, but fires it well wide of the mark. Puck again along the right boards. It spent a lot of time there in the opening minutes of this first period. Mark Mancari, Buffalo Sabres draft pick, gets it behind the red line. First possession for Ottawa on the St. Mike zone. Razik turns the puck, can't get it far up the boards. Right side, they'll get another opportunity. Left side, there's a quick pass for Halishek. He's got some room, but not for long, as he's met by Mancari. They go down in front of the St. Mike's bench. Toronto making changes. Ottawa changing up a couple of players. 17-33 remaining in the scoreless first period. St. Mike's and Justin Peters visiting the Ottawa 67s in high definition on Sportsnet. Power carries with a pass up to center ice. Darrell Boyce, right side, stops halfway. Fakes the shot, wants to pass, nobody home. And pressured enough by Kyle Wharton that he has to move the puck back. Scott Lehman in his own end. Majors get it to the line. Skate out towards center ice. Here's Ivanov. He fires it on one in. And Boccaccio with the stop. 17-02 remaining. No score here in the opening period. Pretty good pace to the start of this game. And the physical play very evident as well. Mark Mancari getting it down on Matt Halischuk. And again, an older player going after a rookie to say, hey, guys, you're coming into essentially what is our home, even though you're the home team. And 
expect a little physical play from the 67s in this game. Majors won the draw. The shot does not get through. Julian Talbot, 27 for Ottawa, gets the puck outside the line. Some hard work gets him to center right, and his backhand is right on Justin Peters. He'll leave it for Whiteley. Whiteley's game, according to head coach Bud Stefanski, has improved night in and night out. That's what he's looking for from this team as he has a look-see as to what he's got in Toronto. And there are those who contend the majors may need to make some moves if they don't catch up soon, but there's not a lot to move. Speaking of moves, big save by Peters. Oh, what a move, Chris Hewlett, showing why Brian Kilray brought him to town early. Elder for the majors, can't clear. It's kept in. Jocelyn from the point takes the shot. It's deflected wide. Majors now with a chance to clear. Clutterbuck wearing the full face shield this week. Gets it the length of the ice. Very quickly on the forecheck, Elder keeps the puck behind the red line, affording a trade for Bud Stefanski's team, and they keep it in. Wilson from the point. Out of front, scores! The Majors strike first. Quick release by John Adams in the slot. And with 16-01 remaining in the first, 1-0 Toronto. And what happens? You get a great save from Justin Peters on the back end. All of a sudden, the Majors come down the other way, and they're able to get on the scoreboard. John Adams working hard. You force the turnover, and from there, Adams down low, gets the puck off a of skate. Jocelyn in front of the net. It comes right out onto Adams' stick, and he makes no mistake about it. Sometimes it's the quick release and not necessarily where you place the puck that helps you to score. And for Adams, it was exactly the case there, as as soon as it touches the tape, he let it go. Majors right back at it again. What a start. Cunningham takes the shot. And Vitaccio got a glove on it. 67's running around a little bit in their own end. Cunningham back at center rights. Back pedals and gets the return feed. Alashev gets in. Can't go too far as he's met by Petrozelic. Puck in the neutral zone. Ottawa can't gain the line. And now St. Mike's will bring it forward. Cassidy Preston with the dump in. Again, a smart play by Preston as the Majors are changing, dumping it into the far corner, allowing a full unit of fresh legs, and now Preston goes to the bench. Doing the little thing so far, except for that giveaway. There's the shot and the goal, and it's tied. Lucas Casper, well, you can't give him the puck like that. We've seen two turnovers in this game, both resulting in goals. First, it was the Majors' John Adams taking advantage as it was kept in at the point by Chris Cunningham. And here on this play, just a poor defensive play. Trying to clear the zone, the last thing you want to do is go up the middle of the ice. And when that happens, you'll always find trouble. And again, the Majors are used to playing in a small rink. So when Dale Good lets go of that puck, that puck normally gets to his player a lot quicker. But on this big uh, ice surface, having to make that wide, longer pass gives the opponent a lot more time to step in. And for Casper, he's a guy you don't want to see get the puck, as you mentioned, that close to the goaltender with no one between him and the keeper. I'll have to keep my commentary to a minimum. I was just praising the Majors for doing the little things right. And then the giveaway <laughs> ties the game at one. Jinx to Merlin. Here they are at center ice. Over the line, right side, stopping and turning. Ivanov, nice pass in the high slot. Lehman shoots, rebound in front of the net. They can't finish. Daryl Boyce parked on the right side. Lehman for Boyce, coming halfway up the boards. Throws it into the slot, and there's a sea of red jerseys there this time. And they'll skate it out towards center ice. Jeremy Atkinson over the line. No possession, and a whistle on the play. As Boyce is tripped up. Daryl Boyce, not the biggest player on the Majors lineup, but he will quite often take on the biggest player on the other team's side. The Majors, not a team known for their pugilistic abilities, but they are a team that can take a lot of penalties. The Majors trying to go up 2-1. It's Lehman with a good shot, and then Boyce just can't find the handle down low. That puck was bouncing all over the place. Not only did it go off somebody in front of the net, would give you the reverse angle look, but once it did, I think it hit the post first, and then just kind of bouncing around there. Boyce just couldn't get his handle on it, but it was a good situation for Boyce to be in because he was on the forehand, therefore his stick was over the goal line in good position just to bang it home. He just couldn't get anything on it. And Carey and McKeever both in the penalty box. Times are not up on the clock yet. We will assume at this point they are penalties that will take care of one another. But we had some four on four hockey to get us going here with 14 34 remaining in a 1 1 hockey game in the first period. Right now, the official waiting for the times to be put on the clock. Now that they're there, we're ready to go. I think these young players playing in this large arena, big ice surface on television, uh, a little more fired up than we're right, what we're used to seeing. And we'll, we'll get to see a lot of them as this broadcast is in high definition. Majors game the line with a dump in the corner.
like Corey Vitarelli takes his man out, but he's got to get back into the play because 367's now come to the Toronto line and turning the puck over Chris Hewlett. And now the Majors bring it back. Right wing pass taken by Vitarelli in the slot, unable to reach it is Wilson. Almost blew a tire, still gets the shot away from a tough angle. That almost caught Patacio off guard, didn't expect it. Trying to move the puck out of his own zone, but unable to. Will Colbert. And the St. Mike's Majors now with three players in front of their own blue line awaiting the Ottawa attack. Talbot stops, takes the shot, a weak one, just putting it on net. And Ottawa wants to make a change. That's exactly what they'll do. And they get three sets of fresh legs out there. There's a turnover, but it's outside the Toronto line. And the 67s now with another chance to start it. There's a shot, the save made by Peters. As Petrozelic let one go, and the puck clears the line all the way back into the Ottawa zone. 13-20 remaining. 1-1 here in the first period. High definition. OHL Hockey and Rogers Sportsnet. Casper leaves it. 67s will move it up ahead. They'll come in on the right side. Carrying it across the line. Big save by Peters as he hugged the post on the right side. Taking care of the shot from Petrozelic once again. The Majors get the puck up. To the Ottawa line, Di Benedetto at the faceoff. Dot all tied up. Adams following up with him. Di Benedetto working against two 67 players. Does well to keep the puck deep in the Ottawa zone. Good job by the rookie first round pick of the majors this year, Di Benedetto, showing his wares early on. There's a pass up ahead. The 67s with the attack now again. Petrozella. Rink wide pass. Penalties are over. Back to five on five. McKeever and then Carey on the ice. And then Carey had Di Benedetto lined up. Andrew Zellick backhands it. Into the zone. He'll hit off on a change. Peters has to look out. There's company coming in behind the net. Justin Peters, one of the better goaltenders in the Ontario Hockey League, at handling that puck. You notice the defenseman back there, Mrazic, still trying to get a grip of the English language. And so maybe communication, uh, a problem there between he and Peters behind the net. Puck in center ice, the major is trapped in the zone. Power gets out just in time, no offside. Akerson just lifts that puck over the Toronto line. Whiteley back after it, no ice in here. It's a collision behind the net, Whiteley just stepped out of the way. Power picks up the puck. And Carey up throwing his weight around in his first period. Damon, right side of the line. Power takes the one-handed pass behind the red line. Looking for space, brings it to the blue line. Nice pass, not a shooting angle though for the Majors as Lehman has spun around. Gets the puck back, fires it down towards the right line. In the corner, Power trying to dig the puck free. He stands in the corner, Adams gets it to him. Power trying to walk out front. Well, that door is closed in a hurry. And a nice job by Derek Jocelyn of doing so. And the 67s carry to center ice. 11 minutes in. Seconds remaining in a 1-1 first period of the Corral Center. Lehman steps around a hit. Pat Ouellette, right boards for Ottawa. Can't keep it in. The puck bounces to center ice. Pretty good pace to the start of this hockey game, as we expected. The 67s playing their third game in less than three days. Meanwhile, the Majors had yesterday off, but have a very spirited skate at the new Ottawa Senseplex. 10.47 remaining in the first period. We are tied at one in high definition on the net. Coming up later tonight on Rogers Sportsnet, Sarnia and Oshawa, we welcome you to join Peter Labardius and John Truce with a call here on the net. Meanwhile, back at the Corral Center in Ottawa, Dan Dudley and Sam Cosentino and the entire crew in high definition today, and we are tied at one, 10.47. Remaining in the opening period, St. Mike's the home team this afternoon. The game originally scheduled to be played down at Bathurst and St. Clair in Toronto, but last year, the owner, UT Melnick, of the Senators and the St. Mike's Majors did the same thing, and it went over so well, they thought they'd do it one more time. And so far, both teams are enjoying the skate at the Corral Center. The 1-1 tie. Here's Halashek over the line towards the net. That goes off the skate. And behind the red line, another turnover, this time by the 67s. Alishuk and Adams doing some good work for Toronto. Now Cunningham has to skate back after it. And we've got a whistle on the play. And we'll wait to see where the faceoff comes up. But in the meantime, we uh, had a chance to talk with Bud Stefanski a little bit yesterday. Well, Dan, it's, uh, everyone thinks it might be a situation. Why would you move a home game to the other team's essentially home rink? Well, in this case, it turned out to be very good for Bud Stefanski and his club because 
They had a video session with Senators coach Brian Murray yesterday. He also ran the practice, and that's the reason why you and I were able to talk to Bud Stefanski for so long. He didn't even lace it up yesterday. So pretty exciting situation for these kids to be able to hear the same stuff Bud Stefanski's trying to teach them, but from an NHL coach. I don't know if Bud will be successful. He offered to hire Brian Murray full time, so he wouldn't have to lace him up any further. But here's Cal Clutterbuck got a one on Ontario, carrying across the line. Nice drop pass, big save. Oh, Batuccio showing the quick left pad to keep it tied at one with 9.48 remaining here in the first. You're watching the OHL on Rogers Sportsnet. Welcome back to the Corral Center. One of the things we wanted to show you, and we talked about in the skate yesterday, is the chip and drive and getting puck support below the puck. Well, that results in a three on two. The other problem that the majors worked on, hanging on to the puck too long. Cal Clutterbuck brings that puck down to an angle where he, where he only has one option, and that's to pass it back to De Benedetto. Well, it was a good shot on goal, but not a great shot on goal. You want more in your odd man rushes, and that didn't happen in that case for St. Mike's. Majors continue to put on the pressure. That puck bounced towards the net. De Benedetto with another shot but it's well wide. Vitarelli keeps it in just tries to throw it softly behind the red line for Clutterbuck who is starting a cycle but the 67s will bring it back and they'll skate it out starting with Talbot at center ice. Over the line fires the shot Peters is a big rebound. Peters trying to clear it. He comes back to the line. Another shot. That one steered the boards. Don't know who that hit in front. We just know it didn't go in. Here comes Clutterbuck. Left side look out. Where are you going? Cal Clutterbuck nowhere. The 67s are going to the box for two. Big hit there. Nick Manner gets the stick or the gloves or <laughs> the forearm, if you will, up into the face of Cal Clutterbuck. And Clutterbuck's a guy who's already wearing that full face shield. Took 20 stitches earlier on. And you can see the face from Van Herp right up into the grill of Clutterbuck. And that results in the major power play. And it's our first power play here this afternoon. And each team has drawn a penalty before this, but they were coincidental roughing miners. And St. Mike's on the power play this year has certainly been nothing to brag about. Ranking 19th out of 20 teams. The majors who played well back on Thursday night in Toronto and made it work, Sam, on the power play. We'll look to see if they can continue with that progress here tonight as Boyce fires it in. Dan's success in this league is often predicated on how well your special teams do and pretty good indication of how the majors are in the standings because of their special teams. Ivanov roofs it! 2-1 Toronto! This kid's got some moves. He's been out of the lineup for a little while and the majors were excited to get him back off of an injury with 8.31 to go. The majors strike early on this power play to take the 2-1 lead. Alexei Ivanov missed the last four games with a sore knee, but here on this big ice surface, he's got a little room to roam as Boyce gets the puck back to the point. Now Ivanov has that space, and a guy who's that quick with ability to handle the puck does wonders in the short amount of time he has before he's finally checked. And he sees that short side open on Batacho, finds it, his first career OHL goal acquired earlier this season from the London Knights. It was a spare part, obviously, for London, but could be a huge addition for the majors. And a penalty coming up to Toronto right off the faceoff. Daryl Boyce will go for tripping. So Batacio's on the bench and a chance for Ottawa with the extra attacker to even the score, uh, which they did earlier in the first period after Toronto got the first marker. Ottawa came right back to tie it up. Well, the Chicago Blackhawks will be happy to see shots like that off of Ivanov. Nice job by uh, Ivanov to pick up the goal. Off the draw, Daryl Boyce will head to the box. Brad Bonello is one of those guys who's like a dry cleaning tag in the back of your shirt. It just really bothers you until you find it. And here right off the drum, sure Bonello is not only saying something, but sticks around in the zone. Boyce making it look like he was trying to remove his stick, but in the process of doing so, he uh, trips up Bonello at the line, and now the 67's get a chance with the extra minute. Trying to tell us you don't do your own laundry, Sam? Is that <laughs> yeah, you got the story that, right. that we're taking? Yeah, I don't iron either. Read right between the lines. Well, speaking of lines, here come the barber pole jerseys of the 67s, but not much happening on that carries carry up the ice. Cal Clutterbuck leads some time, carried over the line, and just lift one in on Batacchio. He'll hold it, and an effective job by the majors on this penalty kill. 133 remaining in the Ottawa power play. 
What a model of persistency this guy has been, Danny Bataccio. He was spotted by a 67 scout playing in the Northern Ontario Hockey League for Sudbury. He walked on last year, made the club, eventually took over the number one spot from Lucas Mensator, only to run into troubles, uh, troubles at Christmas. Very serious health issues. We'll talk about that a little later as the, go as the game goes on. Also suffered a separated shoulder this year, but he's back between the pipes for Ottawa in this game. Bickle and Talbot both overscape the puck in the St. Mike Center, affording Toronto the opportunity to clear. Kashpar will move that puck to the far corner, and it's taken by Talbot. Julian Talbot, 6 feet, 175, to his own line and now to center ice. Not with a lot of steam. He's got to head off. Feeling less than 100%. Big hit. Lehman stepped into his man behind the net as Bickle took the bump. And the Majors again clear the ice and their penalty kill. Coming into this game, ranked 16th, is looking like a sixth-ranked penalty kill to this point. 2-1 Toronto. 39 seconds left in the Ottawa power play here in the opening period. The OHL on Sportsnet in high definition this afternoon. The 67s being pushed around. Brad Benetel knocked to the ice in the corner. Now Rand with a chance to clear. Can't do so. It's kept in. Lehman in to help out. Lehman takes a bump, but Rand is here to pick up the garbage. Can't get it outside the line. Ottawa keeps it in. The 67s moving around, keeping the puck up high to this point. Kasper with the move to the right side. He'll set up top of the house, take the pass. Kasper steps in, takes a shot. Nice block by Halishuk. And the member of the Ontario under 17s looking good as he heads to the bench. B2 is the guy who suffered a face injury, took over 20 stitches in the face. He's still really trying to recover and gain his confidence back from that that happened about a month ago. Darrell Boyce for Toronto with Clutterbuck going to the net. Boyce still with it, takes the shot and firing the glove out. Patacio to make the save. Penalty's over. Back to five on five. 6.02 remaining here in the opening period. 2 on Toronto. Well, if you're a gambler, you're going to like this because it's a little 7 11 action. Nathan McKeever working on Brian Bickle, gets a little help from Lehman at the end of the play. And the physical presence in this game just continues on, not only from Ottawa side, but from the major side as well. You see Matt Halaschuk running into Mancari. Whiteley taking a shot behind the net. Bonello, as usual, right in the middle of things. 67's dump it in, led by Brody Todd on the left side. They keep it in, Ottawa working halfway up the left wing boards. Now throw it behind the red line. Todd chasing after it. Dale Good meets up with him. He Benedetto and Good takes Todd down. Penalty coming up to the majors. Dale already looking at the official to figure out why he's going to the box, but he is with 5.35 to go on the first. Majors with a 2-1 lead. We'll be back with more from the Corral Center in Ottawa. You're watching the OHL on Rogers Sportsnet. Dale Good in the box, cross-checking. He'll serve two for St. Mike's. Yeah, working in the corner, it's called a cross-check, and the stick actually never leaves the ice on Brody Todd. Nonetheless, Todd goes down face first into the boards, and that's uh, sometimes a dangerous situation. It might have been more of a side look than anything. Bouncing puck to the side of the net. Peters took no chances getting down to cover up. Majors do clear. So it's the second power play opportunity for the Ottawa 67s. They'll start at this time with Brian Bickle, the Blackhawks draft pick, carrying up the right side to center ice. He's met immediately by Power. And an offside called against the 67s. You get a look at Brian Bickle. Played in the team or for the 2004 Prospects game. A second round pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. And he's been a very well conditioned since coming over from Sault Ste. Marie. Keever in front of the St. Mike's bench. Tied up with Bickle. They push and shove with one another. And Ottawa very patient because they've got a player trapped over the line. They can't do much with it. Now Cashbar with the dump hit. Hard around so Peters can't get to it. Got to know that the 67s talked about that before the game this afternoon here at the Corral Center. Boyce can't clear. 67s keep it in. That shot is blocked in front by Whiteley at the point. Colbert behind the net. Major set up the box in front. Colbert gets it back. Cashbar on the far side. Half boards back to Colbert. That puck is deflected high into the air. Stays in play in the corner. Boyce after it. He'll get there first. Not enough to clear though. 67th with 50 seconds remaining in the power play. Moving the puck around nicely. Short side in the slot off the iron. Oh, that close to tying it up. Another shot off the iron again. First one by Hewlett. Colbert. 
putting the pressure on as well. 35 seconds left in the power play. That one is fired well won. Back to the point. Colbert to Hewlett. Hewlett comes off the sideboards, top of the circle, fires it with traffic in front, save made by Peters. Majors in all sorts of trouble. McKeever can't clear. Kaspar keeps it in. Throws it to the front of the net, looking for the tip, not there. Power can't clear. Hewlett, and you know this is coming. When a team gets that much pressure on you, someone's either going to score a goal or draw a penalty. And with 13 seconds remaining in the penalty to Dale Good, the 67s will send a player to the box. I would say it's good to have a little iron in your diet, but if you're Justin Peters, this isn't the type of iron you're looking for. Good give and go here between Talbot and Chris Hewlett. He rings it off the bar, and then it goes back to Colbert, and he too goes off the bar. Couple of good chances for Ottawa on the power play as the majors started scrambling just a little bit, but good quick puck movement will often result in good chances it did on that occasion for the 67s. Ride Kilray will watch as his team in the next 10 seconds will have to kill a major's power play. St. Mike's has already made it work with the extra man this afternoon to take the 2 1 lead. 335 remaining, and Toronto's now in the power play as Dale Good is out of the penalty box. The majors taking their sweet time in getting this breakout organized. We're waiting for Good to get out of the box, get that forward, the second or third forward back out there. And it happened, but it took about 10 seconds for them to get it going. There's a turnover. G. Benedetto takes the shot, save, rebound, picked up by Matt Carey, and he'll clear it the length of the ice. Good chance for it to Benedetto. We talked about how well he's played so far in this game, and gets himself another good chance, but can't beat Patacio, who was focused right in. Chris Cunningham leaves it for Vitarelli. Cunningham gets it back. Cunningham to his own line, up towards center ice. Pass to the right side, taken by Wilson. The defender to the dot, likes to carry that puck a lot. Almost carried it right into trouble. And here's a chance now for Ottawa as they are shorthanded. There's a penalty on the plate of the majors. Will it be a penalty shot? That's the question being asked upstairs very early. There's the trip signal. And as Benello takes a look up at the official, he's not seeing that point to center ice that he's hoping for. Well, Dan, you talked about the majors playing on a smaller ice surface. Sometimes that forces the players to get hung up. And you see both defensemen, Wilson and Cunningham, in such a short area. The 67s know to spread the ice. And Benello gets a partial breakaway. And although he didn't score on the play, he's able to draw the penalty again. Because the 67s are so familiar with playing on a large ice surface, they're able to stretch the ice out. And we've seen that happen already a couple of times in this game. Off the faceoff, Ottawa controls it. Colbert at the line. That goes off of McKeever, who was fouled on the play. 67s keep it low. There's a chance for Petrozelic and covering up Peters, but can't hold on to it. Now McKeever almost walked right into cash bar with that puck. And the Gatorade bottle behind the net as well. It's causing a few headaches. It sure is. Usually helps cure them. 2-19 <laughs> remaining here in the opening frame. Toronto with a 2-1 lead. We'll play four-on-four -four hockey here for the next 25 seconds, barring another call. Majors will be offside as Ivanov was well ahead of the rush there. Puck carrier John Adams, one of the newcomers to the Majors lineup this season. Yeah, he was acquired from Belleville, and oddly enough, he went, to, he came to Toronto with Connor Cameron, former coach Dave Cameron's son, going the other way, and it was Connor Cameron who scored the eventual game-winning goal last night as Belleville beat Ottawa 5-2. Oh, right off the faceoff, the Majors had a great opportunity there, but. Some Strong defensive play to get back and make sure that Corey Vitarelli was tied up. Pass over on the right wing as the 67s bring it across the Toronto line and a big hit on Chris Hewlett. Ryan Wilson can do that a few times a game. And the hits just keep on coming here at the Corral. 67s are on the power play. Jocelyn behind his net. Being watched by Cal Clutterbuck. Cal Clutterbuck will just keep going and going and going. And it's a tired cliche to say this guy is one of the battery buddies, but he certainly is for St. Mike's. He was from day number one when he arrived on the scene. 67s working in the corner. Bickle on the ice. He'll park himself right in front of the net. There's Bickle with it now. Looking to the backhand. It's not there. Turns to the forehand in the corner. 25 seconds left in the Ottawa power play. Back to the point. Shot doesn't get through from Jocelyn. Now Colbert. Bouncing puck, not much he can do with it, just keep it low. Last minute of play in the period, Talbot chasing after, comes back to the point. 
67s keep it in. Majors with a chance to clear, and they do. 67s really having trouble setting up in the offensive zone, putting three players back in that line, leaving no one down low. And that's where you want your guys in the power play to get in front of the net, try and mix it up, look for rebounds or deflection. Up ice, Pinello with a quick shot, and the save is made by Peters. 34.9 seconds remaining in a 2-1 game. Toronto leading Ottawa and coming up in the intermission. Well, you don't come to Ottawa and do a 67s game for everybody in Ontario to see without hearing from Brian Kilrain. His outlook on the team will have a Sportsnet News update as well in our Eastern play of the period. We've seen three goals in this game, but the play of the period could very well be a hit. Ryan Wilson, textbook hit on Chris Hewlett, trying to sneak down the sideboards, but was denied any more space by Ryan Wilson. And Carey with a quick release, and Peters made the same penalty coming up in front of the net. And McKeever is pleading his case, claiming that he was all tied up and had no choice but to just get rid of the Ottawa attacker. But guess who's on the other end of things? No doubt, Brad Bonello. And he has seen seemingly involved in just about every penalty, one way or the other, whether he's taking it or drawing it. We've seen him draw two penalties here this afternoon off the draw with Daryl Boyce earlier in the game and here Nathan McKeever gets tied up with him in front of the net. Canelo is one of those energy guys a lot like Cal Clutterbuck in, in the fact that they're always moving. So here we go again it seems like Ottawa has been on the power play for the last half of this period. Only 18 seconds remain in it. Kaspar at his own blue line will scan it to center ice. Elects to hold and well offside on the right side. Boy that was a slow whistle. Thought they were going to get away with a very obvious one there, but with about 42 left in the Ottawa power play and 9.4 left in the period, the faceoff comes outside the line. Lucas Cashbar, CHL import pick. First round pick for the San Jose Sharks, 22nd overall in last year's draft. He had 161 points in 134 games played in the junior check league. So here's the guy who really knows how to find his way out of the score sheet. Drops it back, and that carry shot is stopped by Peters. He's well out to make that save. And the 67s, in getting that shot away quickly, Sam, have afforded themselves an opportunity here on the faceoff to maybe get one more crack at it. Justin Peters manning the net for the St. Michael's Majors. They've had a lot of trouble back there. They've had to pull the goalie in six of the last eight games, and you and I addressed Peters about that after the skate yesterday, and he's still trying to figure things out. 67s unable to draw that one back on the faceoff. And the Majors are able to clog it up in front of Peters and hold on to a 2-1 lead through the first 20 minutes of play here at the Corral Center. When Toronto comes back, they will be short of man for the next 132. But right now, they enjoy a lead here in high definition on Rogers Sportsnet. Hey there, everybody. Sean McCormick here in the Sportsnet studios. Hope you are enjoying this afternoon's OHL game. Let's get you updated on some action around the NFL this afternoon. Tennessee Titans taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Peyton Manning, 41 touchdown passes this season. Seven off of Dan Marino's single season record. First quarter, he goes to work. Hooking up with who else? Marvin Harrison from 24. This game was tied at 10. Tied at 17 now. Billy Volek finding Drew Bennett for 48. And the score... Bennett's third touchdown of the game, 24-17, Tennessee. Second quarter, we're tied at 24. What a football game. Gary Anderson, field goal blocked, recovered by Rob Morris. He takes it back the distance. Manning, 407 yards, two touchdowns through three quarters of play this game. Currently in the fourth quarter, Indy up 41-24. Let's take you to Miami. Buffalo in town, opening kickoff. Terrence McGee. He's got some room, 104 yards of room. The longest kickoff return in Buffalo Bill history. That gave the Bills the 7-0 lead. Now 14-7 Bills. A.J. Feely to Chris Chambers. Yes, Feely can throw a touchdown pass. We are tied at 14. And then again, Feely proving that that was no mistake. Another touchdown pass for 15, Feely's third touchdown of the game. That is a career high, Dolphins up 21-14. Last play of the third quarter, Drew Bledsoe airing it out to Lee Evans. The 69-yard pass and run, Buffalo leading at 35-24 in the fourth. 
Terry Robisky making his head coaching debut for the Browns. They were playing the New England Patriots opening kickoff. Things not going so well for Terry in his debut because Bethel Johnson taking it back 93 yards on the opening kickoff, giving the Pats the early 7-0 lead. Then Corey Dillon, four yards from pay dirt, and he gets dirty for a 14-0 Pat lead. Second quarter, the Patriots continuing to take it to the Browns. Dillon from one yard out, 21-0 New England in the third. Patriots with a healthy 35-7 lead. Tom Brady, deep, 44 yards to David Patton, 42-7 New England. That's the way it stands in the fourth quarter. Sports Center News with Jim Van Horn coming your way at 6 o'clock Eastern. Immediately following the game, you are watching all of today's NFL action as well as Sam Mitchell continuing to play the heavy with his players scheduling an unscheduled practice this afternoon in Jersey. You'll never guess who wasn't there. We will be back with more OHL action after the break. 2-1 St. Mike's after one. See you in the second intermission. The CHL on Rogers Sportsnet continues. Sarnia at Oshawa, our national game tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Join Peter Labardius and John Drews for the call of that game coming up later on on the net. Welcome back to the Corral Center in Ottawa. I'm Dan Dunleavy. And during this first intermission, we wanted to give you an opportunity to learn more about the Ottawa 67s. And who better to learn about the Ottawa 67s from than the Dean himself, the architect of this franchise, Brian Kilray. Well, he could be a dominating player. Um, he's big, he's strong, he's fearless. Uh, he's got a good shot when he hits the net. And um, he's just a typical kid. Like, uh, he doesn't play the same every game, but when he's on his game, he's as good as anyone. Lucas has got a, a great talent, a tremendous shot, a free skater, very strong. He reminds me of Marion Hulsa when he first came into the league with the Ottawa Senators and I just think he's going to be he'll be destined to start him but he's one of those fellows too that uh, sometimes uh, the play of the game uh, he'll just go along with it he could dominate uh, but he hasn't got to that point yet where he's dominated every game but he's got talent to, to work with and he'll he'll adjust to it and become that player that everyone expects. Jacob is he's a feistier kid he's a hard-working kid and uh, one thing about him and Casper uh, all their passes are just always on the stick, always on the tape. And uh, he's, uh, he's not as big as Casper, and I guess that's why he's not uh, talked about in the same vein, but he's a tremendous individual, and uh, he's uh, fearless. And uh, he's, uh, like I say, he, he adds a lot to our team. Uh, both of them are very unselfish with the puck. Sometimes they overpass uh, instead of taking a shot and looking rebound, but uh, that's uh, the different culture. They've had, uh, you know, where they, they pass so often in the European game, it's going to take a little bit of time to adjust, but uh, they're both tremendous hockey players, and like I say, uh, we're just happy and lucky to have them both. I don't really set too many goals, uh, except for first place. Um, we want to be, uh, I'd like to, I tell the team, when you start off a season, you don't look at anything but first, and that's always should be a goal, to play your best, to uh, achieve the best, and so I'm hoping that we can be a number one in our division, but there's some other teams that have that same thought, but. Uh, I don't want them to ever be satisfied with being in a position where they're going to make the playoffs or whatever the case they're fighting for it. I want them to be there because there's so many advantages in having that home ice advantage. There's been so many series that have been won having home ice advantage in the home crowd. And playing in the home of a team that knows all about how important home ice is in the playoffs, the Ottawa Senators, the 67s down by one. We'll be back with our play in the period on Rogers Sportsnet. The play of the first period brought to you by Easton Sports. Easton Sports, innovation versus imitation. Why use anything else? The Majors on the power play in this situation. Daryl Boyce and Nathan McKeever play a quick little give and go, and it's McKeever who finds Ivanov pulling Petrozalik out of position, and that gave Ivanov all the room he needed to go to the dot using Will Colbert as a screen, and he goes short side on Danny Battaccio. The 11-29 mark of the first period. Ivanov's first ever OHL goal. The Ontario Hockey League on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by ADT. Always there.
And welcome back to the Corral Center in Ottawa, Ontario. You're watching the CHL on Rogers Sportsnet in high definition this afternoon. Dan Dunleavy and Sam Cosentino. As we have a look at our first period scoring summary, didn't take long for St. Mike's to get on the board here. The first time these two met this weekend, Sam, it was Ottawa that got on the board early. Yeah, and usually the first team that scores wins, and that would be a pretty good omen if you're a St. Michael's Majors fan. It all started with John Adams as a result of an Ottawa turnover in their own end. Wilson able to get the puck to Adams. Right off his, on his tape and off his tape, beating Botaccio for his sixth of the year. And then Dale Good gives it right away to Lucas Cashbar, who winds up from the top of the dock. It squeaks through Justin Peters, his 11th, unassisted. That was under a minute later. Meanwhile, a little later in the period, the 11-29 mark, our play of the period, Alexei Ivanov, short side on Danny Botaccio, first ever OHL goal. And that was the difference. And you know, the Majors came into this game as the lowest scoring team, just 59 goals. Well, the averaging just over two goals a game, and in that first period, they have almost already reached their quota. And the Majors will start as you had a look at Nathan McKeever, their captain in the penalty box, shorthanded here for the next 132, barring another call or a goal. Toronto with a 2-1 lead. And Justin Peters now down to our broadcast right. And we're ready to get her going here in the second period, and the 67s control off the face of almost said Senators. I was sure that would be blurted out at some point, taking a look at that logo at center ice. So I thought we'd put it out there. There's Cashbar working the right side, along with Bickle. Bickle, cross ice feed. Colbert throws it down to the corner. Colbert looking to get it back. Instead, Bickle, and he had a man open in front of the net, just couldn't get it there. Ottawa on the power play for another one minute and eight seconds, and that is tipped down the ice by Daryl Boyce. Good job on the penalty kill. That puck thrown a little too close in front of Danny Botaccio that time. And the 67s will try and regroup in their own end. Boyce is off the ice for the Majors. And Cal Clutterbuck picks up the four check. He gets in the way somewhat. Ottawa carries across the line. Colbert to the sideboards. And leaves it. There's a shot that doesn't get through. Cashbar loves it down. Colbert pass over on the left side. And Carey. In the slot, there's the tip. Actually, that's Talbot, 27. Colbert back to the point, switches with Cashbar. There's the pass at the dot. Colbert takes a look, fires it, blocked by Clutterbuck. Clutterbuck now out of the play, tries to get back into it. He's hurting his wrist on that play. Backhand and a pass. They can't finish it. Bickle with a wide open cage. Petrus Ellick back for Colbert. 13 left in the power play. 67's trying to tie this up. Cashbar overskates the puck. Majors can't move it out. Wilson's got to get down in a hurry. Talbot, short side, can't get the puck in front of the net. McKeever's back onto the ice. Can he get back there in time? Cashbar with a shot, doesn't get through. And now McKeever with a chance to get the puck to center ice. Clutterbuck working on Cashbar. To the faceoff dot. Centers in front, nobody there. Vitarelli just coasting his way into the play. Both Vitarelli still, sorry, picks up the puck, takes the shot, short side save by Botaccio. Still with it in front, Clutterbuck's shot goes high over the net. Vitarelli and Clutterbuck killed the entire 132 of that penalty and then remained on the edge of the rush. They had nothing left in the tank at the end. Majors taking each other out of the play, and the puck gets free. This could be a problem for Toronto. Two players are trapped. And the puck comes down, and Justin Peters, this is where, and he's tripped up on the play, open net, shot doesn't get through. Peters back into the cage. Just about to say, this is where Peters can help you when you have a couple of players trapped and moving the puck, but he got tripped up. Adams with a tip to open ice, and now Adams and Halishuk move forward with Rand on the left side. Drop pass for Halishuk, looking for Rand, and Batacchio may have got a piece of that as it went through the blue ice. Majors firing right back in. Adams on the left boards. Back to five on five hockey. Van Erp stripped to the puck. Back to the line. Dale Good cannot keep it in. Lehman. Not a lot of room out there. Gets the puck ahead and gets a return to him. Then he's knocked to the ice by guess who? Brad Vanello. Majors carry over the line. Ivanov. He's got one looking for another. Almost went in off escape. Instead, wide short side. Daryl Boyce, backhand shot wide on the far side. Brazic comes off the point. Off the boards to keep it in the zone. Can't keep it in again. And the Majors are forced back. Icing will be called against Ottawa. 16-41 remaining in a 2-1 hockey game. Toronto with the lead. 
67 started this period with a minute 32 worth of power play. Their best chance coming as a result of a shot from the point that gets blocked. And now you're going to see the puck move around. You always want to do get some horizontal movement. It goes down low. Talbot gets the first chance. Bickle with the second. But again, very much the same way the majors. Daryl Boyce had a chance to score in the first period. Just couldn't get his stick on it to bang it past Peters, who was slightly out of position. Now the 67s with Hewlett. Right side can keep control of the puck. Dale Good with a nifty little pass behind him for Clutterbuck. He's over the line on the left side. Deep Benedetto trailing. Clutterbuck to the front of the net. Now taken behind the red line. Still has the puck. Dale Good with a lot of room to light up and take the shot. Save is made by Batancio. Big rebound, but the Majors cannot keep it in. And center ice, Deep Benedetto, and a two line pass called against Toronto. Then you get a look at Julian Talbot, who was an eighth-round pick of the 67s in 2001. His brother, Joe, actually led Ottawa to the Mem Cup in 1999 and again to an OHL title in 2001. Currently, Joe playing for the Alaska Aces of the East Coast Hockey League alongside Scott Gomez. Pretty good bloodlines in the Talbot family. Probably some of the best uniforms in hockey up with the Alaska Aces. If you haven't had a look at it, maybe get yourself on the Internet to take a look. Watch for some highlights. The elder behind the Ottawa net for the Majors along with Adams. He's here being launched by Vetter. Vetter takes Elder to the boards. Adams here still trying to dig it free. He let there as well for Ottawa. Majors keeping the puck deep in the 67 zone. Adams trying to walk out. Halashuk keeps moving his feet. Short side trying to jam it in. Puck still loose. And finally the official blows the whistle. You could hear the official calling to the players, my fault, my fault, in allowing that extra whack or two. And of course, Guelph at London in what could be a record-setting victory for Guelph, uh, London, excuse me, if they pull it off the CHL on Rogers Sportsnet Friday. We invite you to join us for that. Of course, London has a couple of games to get through this week before they get to that point, but they are chasing the Brandon Wheat Kings in that 29 games undefeated. Of course, what is even more remarkable about this feat is that they're doing it to start the season. I think they'll be fired up in that game at the John Labatt Center. You've got to get through Kitchener first, which is always a tough task. But if they get to Guelph, go figure. The last team to beat London, Guelph North, and that was last year. Well, and also in the games that London has won this year, and they haven't all been games that they just walked all over their opponents. They've had to come from behind a couple of times, once against Guelph already and recently against Windsor. London would love nothing better than to do it against Guelph. That was the team that denied the Knights a chance to play in the Mem Cup last year. 67s would love to deny the Majors any more time with the lead here as they carried over the line. There's a shot by Petrozelic. Pickle fires it, spinning in the slot. Peters got that pad down to make the save. A lot of time for the 67s. A little close to home for the Majors. Now Cunningham on the right side, skates to his own line, takes a look up ahead. Nobody's in a passing lane, so he'll carry it to the line. But Duncan is knocked down. Here's a chance on a breakaway, and offside is called. And that close for Petrozelic in the Ottawa 67s. You try to cross ice dump in, and if you don't put anything on it, that's what happens. The puck goes back the other way in a hurry, and a good opportunity just before that for the 67s. But this pass going over two lines. Again, you want to dump it in. Get it all the way down the ice. And it was Bickle and Talbot, or uh, Petra's Alec rather, getting a good chance. And Peters very quick and cat-like down low with the pats. 67s get the puck deep in the Toronto zone again. It's Lehman working against Petrozelic. Now cast far in the corner. Centers in the spot, tipped by Dean Benedetto, and that'll go the length of the ice. Matacho out to play it. Playing five on five hockey. Casper's got some room on his right side. Majors back defensively, though, in a hurry to cut off the lane. Lee Benedetto knocked off the puck, and Bickle takes it. Andrew Zellick takes a pass up high. There's Casper, the one-timer. Goes off the heel of the stick, weak into the corner. Cal Clutterbuck, pass off the boards, takes the hit. Up the head for Vitarelli. With Dee Benedetto. Vitarelli still with it, takes the shot. Rolling puck, and that almost trickled in far side. 67s want to get this line off the ice if they can in a hurry, and this is a very important clear by Ottawa as they look to be in big trouble, Sam. 2-1, they're not in trouble right now. The St. Mike's Majors, this is their home game, and they have the lead with 13.50 to go in the second on the net.
Hockey Central panel will get together tomorrow. Check your times in your various regions across the country for Traeger, Stella, Kiprios, Waters, and Davidson. And this week in particular, of course, not just every night it's important to watch Hockey Central, but talks get underway once again between the National Hockey League and the Players Association. And we can only hope for better things than we've been hearing over the last few months. Very interesting to see how that's going to play out if it's just a ploy. For the players' union, our uh, talks will actually start and continue. Well, you got to figure they are at the breaking point in that whole situation, so it's one way or the other. Some headlines will be made, and headlines made right here at the Corral Center as the penalty box door is open, and the 67s will be shorthanded. McCarry heads to the box for a slash. You can't believe it. This has been a very tightly called game by referee Ian White, and I think he felt much the same way we did, Dan, that both teams really came out with a lot of fire playing in an NHL building on television. If you look in front of the net, Adams tripped up by Mancari right in front of White, and so therefore that will not go unnoticed. And again, the majors go on the power play. Colbert just clears the puck the length of the ice. St. Mike's who did score a power play goal back in the opening frame. And another opportunity here, and Lehman Stripped of the puck, but has the fortuitous bounce well, right onto the stick of Daryl Boyce, and he dumps out behind the net. But Patacio will leave it. Power with Patacio out of the net, can't get it in front, and there was nobody there, even if he could finish for St. Mike's. And they have to go back out with Keeper and Daryl Boyce with Justin Peters, making sure that puck is settled down for the duo. The Keeper losing his stick as Boyce skates by. When you talk about little things out there, that's just a lack of concentration, making sure you've got a hold of the cue. And Daryl Boyce takes his mind off of things for a moment. He's knocked to his tush by Jakob Petrozelic. Discipline has been a question with the majors uh, throughout this season, and that's something there. The boys could have very well taken a penalty and negated the power play. Well, 52 seconds left in this power play. They're pretty much negating it on their own right now. Give the 67 some credit. But Bud Stefanski will not be happy with this power play by the majors unless they can make something special happen here in the next now 38 seconds. And Going back to your own red line usually is not the ingredient for that. We'll see what Lehman can do as he skates around Cash Bar. Leaves the puck. Now it's center ice. The Majors get it across the line, but for all of a split second before it's cleared into the crowd, with 26 seconds left of the power play. It's that first pass, and if you can't make that first pass out of your own zone, your chances of uh, getting any sustained pressure in the other end, no good. Transition game on this power play has been terrible for the majors. They haven't been able to get the puck in deep at all. And off the faceoff. 67's clear. Peters will let it settle for Wilson. 15 left in the power play. Chance for one more rush up ice and maybe one shot before the penalty's over. Vitarelli, right side, halfway up. Fans on the attempt to get it towards the front of the net. Clutterbuck. With Di Benedetto going to the net, is tied up in the corner. Now back to the point. Penalty's over. And carry back onto the ice, but out of the play. Now he's back into the zone. Centered in front, bouncing puck. Majors can't finish Di Benedetto. Watch to the corner. Vitarelli at the dot, takes it behind the red line. Butterbuck all tied up. Stays on his feet, Di Benedetto. Oh, baby, how close was that? Danny Mataccio slammed the door shut, sliding across, sticking that pad out. Keeps it 2-1 Toronto here in the second. A lot of people are very critical of the cycle style of play, but what it does, it wears down the team defensively, and what happens as soon as someone breaks free from that cycle, like the Benedetto does here, where does he go? Right to the front of the net. Vitarelli finds him, sneaking in behind the defenseman, and it's the cycle that creates the good chance. Well, we noticed the fast faceoff rule was back in effect in the OHL Thursday night in Toronto. It certainly was gone for the evening. So, like anything else, it depends on the crew. A lot of time for you and I to chat during that game as a result. Still, as they say in the business, come up with some more stats and interesting information. If this game keeps going at this pace, we won't have a lot of time. It's been a great pace here at the Corral as we have an icing call against Toronto. This game is brought to you by Via Rail Canada. The renaissance of passenger rail has begun. More trains, faster trains, and better services. Make Via Rail your choice for travel. Playback underway. Face off in the Toronto end. Ottawa won the draw. They couldn't get the puck back to the point. Quick shot, though. Rebound in front. Peters with the stop. 
Uh, Ulan, who got that shot away right in front of the net. Now power for St. Mike's. Powers his way through a couple of Ottawa players, but no puck possession. The 67th come across the line with another possession that's tipped away by the Majors. Ottawa will back up. Jocelyn, the pass rink wide. That pass to the left boards goes astray and across the line. Whistle on the play. 10 12 remaining. 2 1 Toronto. Talked about Stephen Whiteley, you did, uh, how he has improved this season. A 14th round pick in last year's draft, and he has really benefited from getting the chance to play with Nathan McKeever. We have watched his game really elevate since the start of the season, and now he's finding himself uh, on one of the regular pairings. Puck goes into the slot. Talbot turning and firing it wide of the mark. Back to the point. Colbert with a shot. St. Peter's loose puck in front. Majors get to it and a chance to clear. A little tip off the boards. Here comes three St. Mike's players to the Ottawa line offside. 2-1. 9.51 remaining. Toronto with the lead here at the Corral Center in Ottawa. You're watching the OHL on the net. President's Choice Basketball coming up on the net. The Toronto Raptors. Very interesting. Almost as entertaining against New Jersey. I think a lot of people hang around to see what the post game's going to be like. Yeah, it's More like than Young the and the rest of the It's unbelievable. Soap opera every day. Worth following, and Sportsnet the place to be for that this week. Majors over the line. They have a 2-1 lead. Cal Clutterbuck. Having a strong year offensively for St. Mike's, along with that type of heavy hitting we saw right there in the 67s. Trying to move that puck out. Brody Todd with his three goals and two assists this season. Carries towards the Toronto line. Losing puck possession. Off the glass. Majors can't clear. It's kept in. William Talbot doing a solid job on the boards for the 67s. There's a shot that goes weak and wide. Peter's just watching it. He comes out on the right wing side. Todd gets there for Ottawa. Picks the puck free. Now back to the point. Jocelyn with the pass. Aitchison can't do much with it. And now it's the Majors. Ryan Wilson leading the rush. Vitarelli trying the outside in. Nothing happening there. Puck back to center ice. Clutterbuck gets it back for Cunningham. Clutterbuck with room at center. Nice pass. Vitarelli towards the end of a shift. Clutterbuck still out there. Hits the shot away. Not a lot on it. De Benedetto fires. Rebound in front. And Patacio forced to cover up. What a shift by Cal Clutterbuck. Very long shift. We saw him score a nifty goal Thursday night against Kingston in the Majors 3 0 win that game. And here, creating good opportunities with Corey Vitarelli. The ability to shield the puck with the body is what enables Clutterbuck to stay on that puck and get the original shot. But I like what he does after it. He doesn't give up on the play. He goes back towards the front of the net and gets another good chance off the rebound. Speaking of good, Dale with a shot. And Matachio not sure where the puck is. Referee lost sight. It did come loose. Right off the stick of Matt Halishuk, the whistle went. Travis Elder in front of the net, another late round pick for the Majors, 13th rounder in last year, in last year's uh, draft, but good plays often result as the opportunity to win a faceoff presents itself. And Adams wins that faceoff there, Elder goes towards the net. That's exactly what happens. You know, Dan, we talked about Danny Botaccio earlier in this hockey game and Batacho is a guy who on Christmas Day last year went into convulsions and had a malformed blood vessel found near his brain. He had surgery, missed the last three months of last season after making the club as a walk on and then this year he gets involved. They're tangled up with Sean Courtney behind the net in the game against Saginaw, separates the shoulder. This is another couple of weeks. One of many stories and a very courageous one on the ice in front of us as these young men try to show their wares to make it one day to the National Hockey League. Right now, Ottawa wants to tie this game up. And they put the pressure on in the Toronto zone. Cash bar along the boards. There's a pass into the slot. Unable to control it. Bickle, he goes to the side boards, and the Majors managed to clear. And icing will be called against Toronto. Things have slowed down a little bit here. 7.58 remaining in the second period. Toronto with a 2-1 lead. This game on high definition on Rogers Sportsnet this afternoon. So Bud Stefanski, smile, and Brian Kilray, you're looking even better. Sam Cosentino knows all about high definition. Yeah, you know what, I'm one of the purchasers of that product from Rogers, and I'll tell you what, if you haven't had a chance to see the game in high depth, check it out. The vividness of the picture is just unbelievable. 
So you didn't host the Great Cup party. Apparently that was Jody Vance, and you have the high definition. I'll assume that Jody has that as well. Otherwise, perhaps you came up a little short there, partner. This doesn't help us. You and I, or at least myself, in high definition. You get those on cameras at the start of the game, and you better have a good makeup artist. Power escapes a hit over right in front of his own bench. Dumps it into the far corner. Just thrown in the middle of nowhere. The 67s will get there first. And it's center ice. Van Carey, with nobody with him, had trouble catching up to the puck. Vanner with a pass off. He's pretty much the only option left unless you throw it up the middle. That's where Ottawa goes. And Van Carey dumps it right on to Peters. Bouncing puck, so you have to be careful with that one. McKeever, look out. Here comes the hit. He sidesteps that. And McKeever will go to the box. And once again, it's the hustle of Brad Vanello that draws the penalty. Puck goes loose behind the net. McKeever takes one bump after being unable to handle the puck cleanly. Jacobson in there first, and then shortly thereafter, once he coughs it up, he doesn't want to allow Vanello to get to the loose puck. So he's forced to get the stick up into the arm, drag Vanello down, and once again, McKeever will go to the box. 7.05 left in the second. Faceoff will be to the right of Peters. Talbot will take the draw against Fitterelli. Ottawa wins it back to the point. They can't keep it in. Colburn has to go back after it. Colburn and Cashbar on the point on this power play. And have a player like Cashbar back at the point. You've got to watch from switching and coming down and getting involved in the slot area. And 67s with that weapon here with the extra man as they work it on the left side. Colbert with the pass off and the return. One timer, fans on it. Pitarelli a chance to clear. Goes from back to forehand and gets it the length of the ice. Oftentimes you'll see that the forwards trying to set up the defenseman as the defenseman moves towards the middle of the ice. That way, when you get that point shot, you have a lot of options. You can pick both corners, and oftentimes a shot from the middle of the ice will produce rebounds as well. Heal it cross ice. Victor Zellick can't catch up to it. It's cleared by Wilson. And the Majors make changes on that clear as they get three new sets of leg. Halasek stays out on the forecheck. Adams in first. Keeping Ottawa pinned in. 67's having trouble moving the puck out. The fans on them a little bit. You know, sometimes, Dan, what works is the simple fact that you take passing lanes away. And that's all Adams and Halaschuk were doing out there. They weren't hitting anyone. They weren't touching the puck. They were just taking passing lanes away. And we talked with Bud about that yesterday. It's just being aware of time and place on the ice and realizing what is happening out there and, and not have tunnel vision. That's a great point. The passing lanes are what you want to get your stick or something in the way of. And right now, Ottawa trying to find those lanes. There's one right into the slot, but it's off the skate. A fan carry into the sideboards. Majors are cleared out again. 14 seconds left in the Ottawa power play. And unless the 67s can correct this type of breakout. Nine seconds left in the extra man advantage. Looks like the Majors will once again successfully kill off another of many penalties they've taken this year. Overager Brad Vanello acquired from Peterborough for a fifth round pick back on October 18th. And he has provided everything that Brian Kilray hoped he would. He brings a ton of excitement, great leadership, and he also has the ability to put the puck in the net. A good addition to Brian Kilray's 67 squad this season. 67s. Trying to keep the puck deep in the Toronto zone. They won't be successful this time. Kyle Wharton and company are turned back in a hurry, and a high one lifted on Patacio. He'll leave it side of the net. The Majors in there quickly on the forecheck on this shift. Dale Good across the line, and that's clearly offside by about a good foot. 2-1, Toronto with the lead. 4.48 remaining in the second. You're watching the OHL on the net. Well, the 67s might have the advantage with shots on net in this game, but it's Toronto with a 2-1 lead here in the second period. 4.45 to go, and that stat, shots on goal this year, on most nights, Sam, has been in favor of St. Mike's, despite the fact that they haven't won a lot of games, and it's been a very frustrating thing for this hockey club. It's been an oddity in the fact that usually the team that shoots more scores more. That hasn't happened for the majors this season. And those shots as well. Talking with Bud yesterday, also pretty equal as far as the scoring opportunities for St. Mike's. And there's a guy that can certainly create a few. 
weird to think that for Dale Hunter's team, this guy couldn't really crack the lineup. Not huge in stature, but uh, you have seen him put some of his skill set on display tonight. Good speed and good puck handling ability as well. Well, and hats off to London as well for making the deal, getting the kids some ice time, and of course already drafted, but still, I'm sure the Blackhawks are happy that he's seeing some time with St. Mike's. Major's happy for his offense. Here's some offense by the Ottawa 67s is Hewlett showing some of his magic, unable to finish. And now Ivanov with a chance on the left wing. Puck bounces a little bit ahead of his stick, just tipping up the line. Boyce bangs against the boards, along with Jocelyn. Puck comes out the other side. 67s get the puck towards the Toronto line. Hewlett takes a hit, gets the pass off right open. Scores! Julian Talbot ties the game in two. Well, Dan, earlier in the sequence, we saw Chris Hewlett with a great chance, but it's Hewlett who initiates this play in the neutral zone once again. And from there, it all gets done with some fantastic passing. And when you're a defenseman and you have the choice to make and you make the wrong choice, it can be very costly. But the puck will come up to Hewlett here, who starts the play in the neutral zone. Now you have three majors out of position. Once Boyce misses that pass, that also forces the defenseman Cunningham to go to that side as well. And that leaves one player uncovered, that player being Julian Talbot. And he was left all alone to go upstairs and beat Peters. His eighth of the year has tied this game at deuces. So after a bit of a drought for goals in this contest, we wait until the latter stages of the second period. The bolts in the twine, and Ottawa ties it up. Adams just hands that puck right back to the 67s. McKeever in his own zone with a pass off for Lehman. Lehman off the boards, trying to get that puck ahead towards Adams. Elder with a tip in. He'll chase after it. Patacho out to Lehman for Panner. He and Elder against the end boards. Halisha trying to walk out short side. 67s will bring it out. Pass on the right side a little bit too far. Cash bar giving chase. Play continues on as the Majors get it halfway up the boards. That's as far as it'll go. And then Ottawa with possession again. Hector's out to the pass on the left side looking for the tip in front. Not there. Casper throws it in the slot again. Petrozella cruising in the area. 250 remaining here in the second. All tied it to McKeever. Keeping his man tied against the end boards. Now Casper. As Ottawa is Toronto running around on its own end. Kyle Wharton in the slot. Can't get the shot away. And the Majors clear, but that's about all they can do. We've got a penalty coming up on the play. I think Lehman has lost his helmet back in the St. Mike's zone. So I would guess the Ottawa door will open, and that's exactly what has happened. So the Majors will go on the power play as Wharton goes to the box. Then I want to show you another look at that goal. And in high definition, we're afforded the ability to be able to see the entire ice. And watch as the 67s really use the width of the ice here. Once Hewlett has it, you see Cunningham and Boyce both going over uh, towards Brody Todd. Once he draws both of those players, that leaves Talbot wide open. And I think it was a situation where Cunningham was thinking that maybe Boyce was going to intercept that pass, so he went behind the puck to support it. Once that pass got through, it was just a quick pass from Todd to get back down to Talbot for the goal. And that's the fine line, isn't it? The anticipation, being able to anticipate and understand what's happening out there, but also not to overcommit. I mean, you can win with it, or you can get burned by it. It's just happened. Cal Clutterbuck and Dee Benedetto behind the red line. Dee Benedetto skates away with it. Halfway up the boards at the hash mark, throws it behind the red line. Colbert can't clear, but finally the 67s do. With a minute 50 remaining here in the second period. And Brazic will start it for the Majors behind his own net. Brazic not one to carry the puck too much, so the pass is off for Daryl Boyce in a hurry. Right wing side for Elder. He and Colbert battle for the puck. Daryl Boyce quick into the open ice, picks it up. Throws it halfway up the boards. Power play for the Majors continues. Looking to regain the one goal lead. Unable to keep his feet. Ivanov throws it in the corner for Boyce. Ivanov halfway up. Back to the point for Lehman. Majors continue to move the puck. Ivanov has some room over there, but Colbert's cut off the lane. Now Lehman gets the shot through with power in front of the net. No tip. Halfway up the boards on the left wing side. Majors trying to keep it deep. Nice job by Jocelyn to keep that puck pinned against the boards. Dug free by Boyce. 27 seconds remaining in the power play for the Majors. Under a minute remaining in the second period. In the slot coming down, Brazic. Fan on the shot. 
Joslin pushed by power from behind. Boyce takes the puck free. Three majors behind the red line. Now back to the point. Shot gets through and a glove save by Danny Batacchio. The Sudbury native holds on. And now we've got some punches thrown. Power takes one and backs away. Power in front of the net. He's a wide body guy. Pretty deceiving in the uniform, but when you get to see him with a shirt off like we did after the skate yesterday, a tough guy to move out of the way. And he is jostling with Jocelyn in front of the net. And the two of them get the sticks up, the gloves up, into the face of each other. Coming up in the second intermission, we will have a chat, Sam and I, with Nathan McKeever, the captain of the St. Mike's Majors. And boy, you talk about filling shoes anytime you take over a captaincy with any team. But Tim Brent was, well, Tim Brent really played, of course, for the Team Canada Juniors, the leader in Toronto for the past four years. And Nathan McKeever now wears the C that Tim once dot on his jersey. I think he's really done a nice job in filling that role. And he's a guy who, though selected, in the eighth round by Vancouver in the 2003 draft uh, is still improving in my mind and has really picked up his pace of play in the few games he's had since uh, representing the Ontario Hockey League in the ADT Canada Russia series. Wharton is back on the ice, so the power play for the Majors is over. Coincidental minors to Jocelyn and Power cancel each other out. 67s. The only goal of this period is they try to get one more and take a lead into the intermission. At the point, Brody Baird shot. Goes into the corner. Todd with a tip. Puck slides in front in the slot. Another chance. Saved by Peters. He doesn't know where it is. Chris Hewlett afforded some time in the slot. Untouched, really, to get that shot away. And now all the touching begins in front of Justin Peters. That's the fifth good scoring chance for Chris Hewlett in this hockey game. And talk about a guy having to, uh, big shoes to fill. Goes back out off the bouncing puck. The defenseman, or Clutterbuck rather, coming back to help out defensively, can't get a handle on it. The puck actually goes off the toe of Peters and back between his two pads. And Chris Hewitt, you know, the guys were making fun of him when he was traded. The Friday before that, it was the 67s, and Generals playing in a game, third period of that game. Hewitt gets a penalty shot, but Tachio stopped him, so you can rest assured. Once he came over, Patachio was right in his face <laughs> saying, hey, you remember me from last week? You missed the penalty shot on me. And once again, as was the case at the end of the first period, Ottawa had the faceoff in the Toronto end, an opportunity maybe for one more shot. And as was the case in the first, they did not get that shot. We are tied at two, 40 minutes gone, one period remaining. We'll talk with Majors captain Nathan McKeever in the second intermission coming up next on the net. Hey everybody, Sean McCormick here in the Sportsnet Studios. Uh, Owen Sound trying to pull five points clear of Kitchener for third place in the Western Conference this afternoon. Uh, Owen Sound led by 19-year-old Stefan Rizicka uh, with 38 points in 28 games. Uh, Barry and Owen Sound highlights. Let's get to them. First period, 1-0 on Owen board. Sound. Uh, Barry on the power play. Martini. Nathan Martini knocking stars. one back, and we are tied About up at one. Second period, Barry on the power play. Uh, point shot, stop, rebound going to Brian Little, giving Barry the 2-1 lead. Owen Sound then goes on the power play. Jonathan Lehan. Johnny's got his eighth. Tied at two. And that is how this one would end up. Martini and Little score for the Barry Colts. Igor Gangalski and Jonathan Lahoon, as mentioned, scoring for the attack. This is Barry's third straight tie. Let's move on to some NFL action from this afternoon. Houston taking on the Jets. Second quarter. Actually, that's uh, Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Pardon me. That's a Michael Pittman four-yard run, 7-0 Bucks. Third Greasy. quarter, Brian Greasy, 36-yard touchdown pass touchdown to Joey Galloway, Joey Galloway, giving the Bucks the 20 yard to nothing touchdown. lead. Michael Vick, tough afternoon, picked off by Brian the Kelly in the end zone. Again. And Kelly has Brian a little room Kelly. to move. 26 Kelly yards of room to move. To uh, well, a lot more than 26 yards. Takes it back to the 26-yard line before he is taken down and on the ensuing drive. Give it to Mike Allstott from one out. Bucks win it 27-0. Michael Vick, 115 yards passing, no touchdowns, two picks. 
Houston taking on the Jets. Second quarter, 6 0 Jets. Dominic Davis from 2 0, giving the Texans the 7 6 lead. The third quarter, Curtis Martin, four yard run, giving the Jets 13 7 lead. And the Jets second and goal. Curtis Martin, who had a pretty solid day, 134 yards rushing. He would get in. Jets would miss the convert 19 7. They go on to win it 29 2 7. Sportsnet News coming your way with Jim Van Horn uh, at 6 Eastern immediately following the game. You're watching all of today's NFL action as well as Raptor News where Sam Mitchell held an impromptu practice for his team today. Obviously not the most popular guy in town as he attempts to smooth things over with not only his entire team, but uh, namely Rafer Alston and uh, Lauren Woods who uh, rebounded somewhat last night, but the Raptors lost again. The one guy that didn't attend today's practice, Vince Carter, didn't even attend last night's game. Stayed at his hotel. Perhaps there is something in the works. Who knows? Jim Van Horn has the details. It's 6 Eastern. Enjoy the third period. Currently 2-2 between the St. Mike's Majors and the Ottawa 67s. The CHL on Rogers Sportsnet coverage continues tonight. Sarnia and Oshawa. Peter Labardius and John Drews will have the call of that game. We invite you to join us as our... Doubleheader continues here on the net. And we are at the Corral Center in Ottawa. Dan Dunleavy and Sam Cosentino. Interesting first couple periods of play. We've got ourselves a tie game at two apiece. And we are joined by St. Mike's captain, Nathan McKeever. First of all, Nathan, uh, your thoughts on the first two periods and about playing here at the Corral Center? Uh, well, I thought we came out real, real well, played strong in the first period. Uh, we're a bit slow in the second period, and they tied the game up. And just a great experience playing in the Corral Center, getting to sit in an NHL room and uh, playing an NHL East surface. Pretty nice. Now, yesterday we uh, saw Brian Murray at the skate, and we know that he took you guys through a video session earlier in the day. How'd that work out for you guys? Oh, it was great. It was great to have an NHL coach give us some tips, and hopefully it helps out in the third period now. You talk about the NHL coach giving some tips. You're now one of the veteran players on this team. Uh, you're wearing the captain for St. Mike's, following in the shoes of Timmy Brent. How much talking do you do with the rest of your teammates out there? You've got a veteran defensive core, but you do have some new faces in the lineup that are still trying to feel comfortable. Well, it's just not me. It's all the all the old guys. We have a lot, a lot of third year, fourth year guys. So we all talk to the young guys and ice, let them know what we're doing off draws and make sure they're make sure they're doing the right thing. Just want to touch on the ice uh, once again. I noticed a couple of times, especially in that first period, you guys really kind of bunching up a little bit. So used to playing at home at uh, at St. Mike's. Is there a, a huge adjustment when you move to this big ice surface? No, I don't really think so because we play half our games on the road anyways, and most of those ice surfaces are this size. So I don't think it's a big adjustment. We should talk, of course, a bit about your experience with the OHL selects against the Russian selects. Uh, you had yourself a fantastic game in Mississauga. Uh, talk about your thoughts going into the opportunity and, and what you've taken away from that and, and what you're hoping for, obviously, with the, the announcement of the Canadian Junior invitees coming up on Monday. Well, it was a great experience to play in those, ga play in those games. There's so many great players playing there. A lot of them played the World Junior, played in the World Juniors last year. So this is a great experience to play with all of the best players from around the league. And, uh, well, I'm not really, I'm not really thinking about the announcement next week. Uh, whatever happens, happens. I know they have a uh, strong defensive core for the World Junior team, so there's a lot of guys coming back. So if I happen to get invited, that'd be great. But I'm not really worried about it. You're drafted by uh, Vancouver in the 2003 draft, and now that those guys are obviously uh, not working, have you gotten a lot of input from the Canucks as far as your play is concerned? Well, uh, yeah, uh, Stan Smeal, the director of player development, the Canucks has been down a couple games. And I talked to him and. He tells me what i got to work on and uh, what, I, what I'm doing good, and he just keeps in touch with me a little bit. All right, Nathan, we'll let you get to the room. Thanks for your time very much. After two periods of play, the St. Mike's Majors and the Ottawa 67s are tied at two. We'll be back to the Corral Center in a moment. You're watching the OHL on the net. The CHL under the bright lights here at the Corral Center in Ottawa, Ontario. The 67s and Toronto St. Mike's Majors all tied at two. In that second period, a couple of good chances for both sides. The goaltenders standing up to the task. Peter is showing how well he's able to move his feet down low. A couple of good chances for the Czechs. The Czech duo for Ottawa there. And then just unable to really get a handle on it. Hewitt slides it along the ice, but again, Peter's there with the pad save. Finally, Bickle working in front. Chris Hewitt with about his fifth good scoring chance. Tucks it right underneath the pads of Peter's for the save. And then, the goal, Hewlett setting it up. Good play down low as Talbot picks up his 11th of the year to tie the game at two. That was the only goal scored in the second period. 
So we invite you to stick around as you see the scoring summary from the second period. Talbot's eighth of the year at 16-10 from Todd and Hewlett. You see the shots on goal still in favor of the Ottawa 67s, but we're locked at two. The high-definition CHL experience continues in a moment with a third period here on the net. Yeah, they're packing them in here at the Corral Center in Ottawa. 67's fans, young and old, some St. Mike's fans as well made the trip from Toronto along the 401. And they're seeing themselves a pretty darn good hockey game here in the Corral Center. Tied at two. And we have 20 minutes of regulation time to go. If it's not settled before then, we see a little extra hockey in high definition. And yeah, this is a big game actually for both clubs right now. The majors sit in the last spot in the Eastern Conference with just 20 points entering play, tied with Oshawa. Meanwhile, the 67s with 27 points, one up on Barry. So two teams in the lower echelon of the Eastern Conference standings looking for points here today. Talbot, Todd, and Hewlett out there to start it for Ottawa. Hewlett first in on the four check. Making sure the majors keep the puck deep. Ivanov, Clutterbuck, and Boyce for Toronto. To get it started on a fresh sheet of ice. Here at the Corral, up to center ice, nobody wants it. In the neutral zone, Ottawa, Todd across the line, bumped off the puck by Daryl Boyce. Boyce will take it behind his own net. Ivanov circles to the left. Butterbuck up high to the right. And that means that Boyce will have to skate it out himself. Nowhere to go with it. As the Major's not on the same sheet with that breakout. And it's center ice again. It's just a who wants it type scenario. And right now, Sam, both teams Trying to get a handle on the first breakout here to get it going in the third. When you're breaking out, you want to have puck support. Daryl Boyce comes out, emerges from that side of the net, but there's nobody around to help him out. He has no choice but to chip it out, but it only gets to the line, and then Ottawa able to take advantage of the turnover. Players standing still off puck. There's Ivanov. He takes the shot. Almost fooled Votaccio. Bit of a knuckler. Back to the line. St. Mike's keep it in. Cunningham for Toronto. Gets the shot through. Adams parked in front of the net. Bounced. Out of the way by Brody Beard. And now the 67s with Todd skating up to center ice. Todd will try to get off on a change as he softly massages that puck into the corner. Now the Majors up to center ice on the right side. Wilson, as he's wont to do, carries the puck. This time in deep. Wilson scores! Oh, that was magic by Ryan Wilson. And Toronto regains the lead. 3-2 early here in the third. Well, five is one more than four, which used to be Bobby Orr, and that's exactly what Ryan Wilson looks like on this occasion. He slips down the sideboards. Kyle Wharton goes to take him out, but he doesn't fully check him off the puck. And then one nifty move towards the front of the net. The last defenseman there is Brody Beard, but by the time he gets over to Wilson, it's too late. He goes five hole on Danny Vitaccio. That is such a tough play for a goaltender to make a stop on because emerging from that side of the net, you don't want to cheat off the post too soon and open up the near side, nor do you want to move laterally with the feet because it opens up the five hole. That's what we saw there. That's where Wilson went 3-2 major. Sweet moves by the Windsor defender. Playing for St. Mike's. Now it's Dale Good. Pass up the middle on his own end. Taken by Vitarelli. He'll dump it in. Vitarelli knocked down after the dump in. But Tachio up to play. And he's got Cal Clutterbuck on him right away. 67s. Get the puck out to center ice with no possession. Al Beard in his own end. Off the boards, but again to open ice. Vitarelli wants to shoot it. Puck a little bit too far off the end of his stick. Couldn't take the shot or get a pass away. The Majors are forced back to their own end. Bouncing puck at center ice. Butterbuck. Vitarelli behind him. Gets the shot away. It's deflected wide of the mark. Di Benedetto goes down. He's out of the play as the puck is lifted softly onto Batacchio. And he'll just leave it for Brody Beard. Beard to center ice and dumps it in. Matt Carey gives chase. McKeever gets there first, but McCarry with a fortuitous effort and bounce comes up with the puck. He centers it in front of the net. Nobody there for Ottawa. And Van Ert back at his own line. Cross ice for Aitchison. He's bumped by Boyce. Power picks up the loose puck. And it's center ice McKeever. Takes a look to the open side of the ice. Nothing there. He turns it back along the boards. And Ottawa, all they can do is lift it down towards Peters. Here's a good example of how Peters is good for that puck. Put it right on the tape of power, but power unable to move it. And Lehman in his own end. Being watched by Alfonso, who has been quiet in this game. Not 
the case in the first meeting between these two this weekend in Ottawa. Alfonso with a pair. Now it comes up with the puck. There's a quick shot save. Rebound comes up high. Power can't clear it. Boyce skates by it. Ottawa keeps it in. Backhanded low by Pat Roulette. Lehman behind the net. Working against James McGinn, number 88. Bouncing puck. Chance there for Roulette. McGinn behind the net. Now coming down to help out Alfonso. Overskates the puck. And the Majors get to center ice, but that's as far as they go. Changes now for Toronto. 67s changing what they can as well. Whiteley will just wait. And we saw Toronto have trouble starting it out moments ago. We'll see what they do this time. And they have trouble again. Because that time Adams basically skated himself, Sam, right out of the passing lane. Need to spread out a little bit, and we talked with Nathan McKeever about that in the second period intermission. If the ice surface was a problem, but we have seen it a couple of times here with the majors bunching up. Adams carries to center ice, in across the Ottawa line, takes the hit, gets the puck over the line. Though Adams will not get any return passes on this rush as Cunningham is forced back. Adams again at center with a tip. He'll give chase, working with Elder and Halishuk. Halishuk. Gets a piece of that with a high stick. Ottawa will get there first. Van Ert. So play continues on. That's off the skate. It'll go the length of the ice. No icing on the play. It went off a Toronto player. Peters behind the net. Fires it off the boards. Talbot throws it towards the front of the net. Wilson with a lot of time to settle that puck down. Elder with a tip. Can't clear. 67s trying to hand the majors in here and even this thing up again. Toronto led 2-1 until the latter stages of the second period. Penalty behind the play, and that's Wharton, I believe, will go to the box. That's what you get for forechecking if you're Travis Elder. You just want to be down in the zone, creating uh, some traffic and taking away space. So Elder chases the puck behind the net. He sees he's right on Jocelyn's tail, but it's Wharton who ends up getting the trip. Let's show you one of the techniques used by Bud Stefanski, something he adopted five years ago. It's called the chip and drive. Mrazek chips the puck up. You have back end puck support. Now the majors are driving. For a second there was an odd man rush, but nonetheless, you're still three on three, and you get three players moving towards that end of the ice. A good chance created as a result of a simple chip off the boards and drive. Bud Stefanski likes to see what he calls players being below the puck to support it. And when you get the puck in the zone like that and you have guys with the momentum moving forward, that's below the puck support. Good example of it right there. Cal Clutterbuck at center ice, right wing side, dumps it in. Patacio out of his net, almost gave it away to Clutterbuck. Dale good pinching down for the Majors, keeps it halfway up the boards. Majors and Ottawa actually both took penalties on that play. Elder in the box with Wharton as well, so we're playing four on four. Toronto with a 3-2 lead, 13 minutes and 53 seconds remaining. Here in the third, Jocelyn with a pass off. And the 67s will try the right side. Cross ice. Pass doesn't work. Majors tip it out to center ice. Corey Vitarelli. Pass ahead for Power. He's got some room. Power fakes. Shoots. Fans on the shot. Backhand. But Tatcho got a pat on it. As Vitarelli followed up. Jocelyn overskates the puck. Majors keep it in. Vitarelli throws it in front. Power was there. But Tatcho got the pat out. And it's cleared by Matt Carey. Right on. The stick of Justin Peter. Power at center ice with a tip in. He's been out there a while. He needs a change. Gets the puck deep and he's on. Better being watched by Daryl Boyce. Both teams skating well here this afternoon. A good pace right from the get-go. Boyce still with that puck down low. Out there. Trying to wrap it around. Loose puck. And it's picked up by Yanko Petrozelic. Pass over to Kaspar. Kaspar with Petrozelic. The shot. Well, Dan, when you're four on four, the last thing you want to do is have both your forwards beneath the goal line. That's what happened for the majors at the far end of the ice. That allowed the two Czech teammates, Kashmar and Petrozalek, to break out of their own end. And once Lehman goes on the ground, it leaves a two-on-one situation. McKeever is forced to make a choice he doesn't want to have to make. And although Adams came back, he got back there too late. You see, 
voice down low, and so too is the other majors forward. Lehman takes a swing at the pass. Now Casper has a two-on-one, and you know these two guys are magic with the puck. They've played together uh, pretty much since they were born. And uh, it pretty much showed right there because they were fantastic in moving the puck and getting that two-on-one to be successful to tie this game. Now the Majors, Halishuk with a chance, shoots safe, but touch you. Boy, this game is going end-to-end. -end. OHL excited in high definition on Sportsnet this afternoon. Wharton and Elder are out of the box, and that shot goes high into the crowd as we head off for a brief, brief breath. Tied at three here in the third. You're watching the OHL on the net. Back at the Grell Center in Ottawa, and that duo, ever so dangerous for the Ottawa 67s, and Sam, they have been a factor here again this afternoon. And their centerman, is Peter Simicalis, before he got traded. He wore number 19, and you see that's the number now done by Jacob Petrozato. Always fun for play-by-play -play men to see that 19 still being worn. There's a shot from Di Benedetto, and the save is made. I know at St. Mike's as well, when Matt Halashek wore the number eight, once worn by Captain Tim Brent for four years. Took fans and everybody else a while to get used to that. To get a look at a rookie who's been doing a fine job fitting into the OHL here. Selected 18th overall in the OHL priority draft and getting a chance to see regular ice for the majors this season. He's got the puck now against the near boards. Clutterbuck, second year player, working hard to dig it free. 67th, led by Ty. Across the Toronto line. Nice job by Brazic that time. Tying his man up just shy of drawing a penalty. And there is no call on the play. 11.45 remaining here in a tie game. 3-3 in the third. Dan, you talked about uh, Mrazic and how much he has improved. Here's a guy playing with a lot more confidence. We talked to Bud Stefanski about his play yesterday and really struggled when he came over from the Czech Republic. Had a lot of trouble with the English, doing a good job tying up Hewitt there. And is now starting to take English lessons, starting to feel comfortable, and seeing more ice. He has been the benefactor of seeing more ice because his play has improved. Majors with possession off the faceoff, turn it over. Again, keeping it in. Willette giving chase. The keeper on his backhand, the captain behind his own net, dish off the power right side, takes a hit. Power giving chase now on Ward. Fancy dancing by Ward at his own line. Ottawa gains the Toronto zone, but not with possession. And they're forced back to center ice. Ward, cross ice pass. Ottawa trying to go straight ahead with him that time, but two St. Mike's players in the passing lane. McGinn will just fire it in. And he looks to the bench. Ottawa will make a change. Under 11 minutes remaining in the third period. Tied at three, and Power brings it in again. Adams. Trying to catch up to Van Earth and the puck man carry now. Right side. He's got some speed to center ice. Dumps it in. Cunningham is there first, being watched by Ackerson. Adams. Pass right over the Senators logo at center ice. A little bit too far. And the Majors have to go back into their own end. Pretty close to being too many men on the ice as Adams leaving the ice, the ice late at the end of the shift. Alex are trying to go through the legs. Does get the puck across the line. Vitarelli, Halashek following up. Into the corner with it. Takes a bump. Elder on the ice for the Majors. Vitarelli comes away with it. And the referee blows the whistle on the play, and that's because Brad Vanella was down on the ice. I don't know if he took a high stick or a puck in the face. We talked about Corey Vitarelli off the top of the broadcast, getting involved with Brad Vanella, who took that stick up underneath the glass. Four players get tied up. Will Colbert down there as well. Maybe it was the elbow of Elder that got up into the grill of Vanello. Nonetheless, he went down, maybe looking to draw a penalty. It never happened. The face off just to the left of Danny Patacho. Clutterbuck, Vitarelli, up front for Toronto, along with the rookie Di Benedetto. And Clutterbuck will take the face off. And he'll do it against Talbot. Been pretty consistent on the draws here this afternoon for the 67s. Goldberg behind his net. Talbot with the skate by. Takes the pass at center ice. Across the line. Talbot takes it behind. Centers in front. Back to the point. Shot. That dribbles just wide. And Wilson 
Had some time, but he opted just to throw that the length of the ice, and an icing call against Toronto will bring the faceoff back into the St. Mike's end. Tied at three, 9.41 to go in the third here at the Corral. The CHL Top Score is brought to you by CGC Inc. Sponsors of the CHL's Top Score Award and three London Knights among the top scorers. Ramuski making up the rest of it. A couple of line mates there in Crosby and Denny Rusin. And of course, with London doing so well, all eyes in the junior hockey world are on the Knights. And will they set a new record for their undefeated streak? Join Sportsnet later this week as they take on Guelph. And that could be the record-setting night. Right now, we've got ourselves a fantastic game to watch down the stretch here. Tied at three at the Corral Center. Toronto and the 67s. Ryan Kilray behind the bench of the 67s, trying to orchestrate a win here at the home of the Ottawa Senators. And Having to contend with the St. Mike's team, Sam Cosentino, that's probably looking as good as we've seen them all year. Well, we saw him play a pretty good one Thursday night at home and defeating Kingston 3 0. Uh, they rebounded, have rebounded from that game with a solid effort here tonight. Jocelyn behind his own net. Forced out by Ivanov. Power on the four check. Keeping an eye on Colbert. Chases Colbert around behind the net. The majors aren't going to stand and wait now and let Ottawa set anything up. They're chasing the puck carrier immediately behind that net. And it's not allowing any possession unless you want to give it away like that. Meg Carey shot doesn't get through. Back on the point, fires another one, and that one went off the body of Pickle in front of the net. Loose puck fired up into the mesh over the glass with 8.31 to go here in the third. Pickle with a good chance, but he cannot continue to give the puck away. Once the puck gets into Toronto's end, Cunningham just flicks it up blindly. It's picked off by Mancaria. A good shot on goal with three sets of legs providing a screen in front. Boy, I'll tell you what, if you uh, are Bud Stefanski, you'll probably be having a word or two with uh, Chris Cunningham in the bench after that puck. There's a puck that floats dangerously beside Justin Peters with bodies Almost camouflaging the disc. Back out at center ice. Wharton throws it back. Vanner picked by Vitarelli. He's got some room. Corey Vitarelli shoots one off the side of the net. Wharton goes down on the play. Puck is loose. Taken by Ackerson. He'll skate it up towards center ice. Being watched by Halishuk all the way. Halishuk comes up with a puck. He's on his own though, and Matt's got only two Ottawa 67s to beat, and every. Other major going to the bench on a change. There's a shot. Peter steers that one. Handling into the corner. Around the boards. Halasek picks it up. Pass in the center of the ice. Taken in full stride by Ivanov. Ivanov over the line. Can't get his way around Wharton. And it's dumped the length of the ice for an icing call against St. Mike's. Yeah, we saw Cunningham give it away at one end for St. Mike's, but Nick Van Erp does the exact same thing here with Vitarelli giving chase. He simply swipes the stick. Now he's around Van Erp and has a pretty good clear lane to the net, albeit on a bad angle, and Pataccio made sure he had that short side covered. But again, giveaways can often be costly. Van Erp and Cunningham giving away two good scoring chances. Colbert with a backhand behind his net, Jocelyn. Takes a look up the right side, and that's where they'll start it. But it's cut off by Clutterbuck. Jocelyn gets it back again. Voice on him immediately. At center ice. Ivanov trying to dance around Todd. He would have none of that. Lehman fired into the end boards. As Hewlett is out there throwing it around. Now Ivanov. Trying to feather a pass through a couple of bodies. That doesn't work. Now Ivanov and Boyce changing for St. Mike's as the 67s with Jocelyn stumbling a little bit as he gets to center ice. And that puck will clear all the way around the boards. Chasing after it is Power. Working against Vanner. Now Talbot reaching for it on his backhand of center ice and dumps it in. Talbot heads to the bench on a change. Todd follows. Dale Good. Power with the lift in. That rolls to the right of Matancho. He fires it around the boards. Power pinching down to keep it in. Kept in by Good at the line. 
Now Nick Vetter. Six feet, 185, former ice dog. Pass on the left side, Bickle takes it. Floats it out to center ice. Majors come up with it, Dale good on the back end. Razzik threw that one right up the gut. Lucked out that that wasn't knocked out. Very dangerous pass going the width of the ice. Good, waiting for Vitarelli to get on side. Didn't wait long enough. Delayed call against the Majors. Canceled as Ottawa moves it off the ice. No possession for the 67s. They'll have to forecheck to get the puck back, but they're fortunate it comes all the way back to their own end. Now Wharton gives it away at center ice with his pass up ahead. Not connecting. Play a little ragged right now. Petra Zalek on the ice for Ottawa. Along with Kaspar is 67s. Look to the big guns to maybe get them a lead here with five minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the third. A lot of play in the neutral zone right now. I mean, the team uh, seems to be wanting to give up that area because oftentimes turnover in that area can lead to good scoring chances. Bickle watches that puck slide by him. And now McKeever turns in his own end. Halloship, backhander off the boards. Nice feed a little too far for Dean Benedetto. McKeever at center ice. Makes the return pass on his backhand. Throws it up for Halishuk. Nice touch, Adams. Dumps it to the corner. Di Benedetto gives chase with Jocelyn. Jocelyn throws it behind the net. Atkinson into the middle. Taken by Benedetto. Doesn't get far. Following up Atkinson. Drops for Benedetto. Benedetto shoots. Saved by Peters. He covers up. Right in the protector, tied at three with 4.29 to go on the third. A close one at the Corral Center and live in high def on the net. The game review brought to you by Castrol GTX. High mileage, it helps older cars feel young again. Lexi Ivanov with his first ever goal. That made it 2-1 after two periods of play, but Lukas Kashvar has responded twice, and that's where we stand. Tied at three here late in the third period. Face off to the right of Justin Peters, won by the 67s. Larkin shot is well wide and weak off the end boards. Peters will leave it there. Dale Good, pass up on the left side. Looking for Count Clutterbuck with the right wing. That doesn't work, but the Majors still get it towards the Ottawa line. Taken in by Boyce, everything's on side. The Majors will try it again. Pass on the left side. Ivanov turns. Boyce goes to the corner. Clutterbuck will get there first. Look out as Clutterbuck leaves his feet a little bit to deliver that hit. Almost as dangerous to the deliverer as the receiver. Talbot coming down the right wing boards. Keeps it low on the Toronto end. Good hit against the end boards. And the official will blow it out for a face-off with 3.44 remaining in the third period. Tied at three. Chris Hewitt, the addition we talked about, uh, coming over from Oshawa in that trade for Peter Simicalis. He's done an excellent job tonight. I, having a little trouble finishing off, but he has created with five or six good scoring chances for Ottawa in this game. Petrozalek won that face-off, shot from the point high and easily gloved by the Blythe Ontario native, Justin Peters. And he'll hold it for the face-off in the very same spot all over again. Four seconds ticked off the clock that time. Petrozalek now wearing that number 19. It was left open once Simicalis was traded. Fans in the Ottawa area, December 30th at 7 o'clock. Anthony Stewart and the Kingston Frontenacs will be in town. Always a pleasure to see those teams. Actually, Anthony Stewart probably won't be with the team at that time. Now that he put two and two together with the time on the calendar, he should be in Grand Forks, North Dakota with Team Canada. Power right now is in the right wing corner in the Ottawa zone. We watched by Colbert. Dean Benedetto's got a man in front. Can't get it to Vitarelli, who was standing there with all day to finish the job had the delivery been on time. A nice job defensively by the 67s and tying up the majors. Vitarelli then takes a hit up here at center ice. Lee Benedetto crashing against the end boards on the four check. Bickle carries up towards center ice. He's stepped into by Halisha. He carries the puck across the line. Now Vanner, Halisha giving chase. That puck goes up into the Ottawa bench. 2.43 remaining in the third. 
and that's what you do. Again, Hallis Chuck giving chase in the four check. That forces the 67s to make a play that they don't want to make. And when you're forced to do things and when you don't have the time and space required to get them done properly, that's what happens. A turnover, and now the faceoff at this critical juncture in the game is inside Ottawa's end. Canelo for Ottawa on that faceoff. Has certainly been involved in more ways than one here this afternoon, and he gets chase right now on Dale Good. Such a smart player. He loses the draw there, but what does he do? He ties up Adams to not allow the center to gain possession, and all of a sudden the 67s are able to break up. And Carey and Vanello working the cycle along with Ackerson. He's picked up by Adams behind the net, trying to pin that puck against the inboards. With 2-12 remaining in the third, tied at three. You start cycling the puck like this, there's a good opportunity. You might get yourself a man advantage, if not a goal here, in the waning moments of the period. Sometimes fatigue in that situation will force the defensive team to take a penalty, and Good almost took one there. Banner, pass up ahead. Atkinson, left side over the line. Just lifts it in. He'll give chase as the 67s make changes. So he was on his own, and now it's Butterbuck for Toronto at center ice. He's pinned to the sideboards. And a very quick whistle this time by the referee with 1.42 to go in the period. And a reminder to join us, Jim Van Horn coming up at the top of the hour with Sportsnet News. Always a busy day, Sunday in sports. And Jim will have the lowdown for you. We've got possibly six minutes of hockey left for you here. Up 30 to go. And of course, extra time, as was once said by a famous play by play man, looming large here at the Corral Center. There's Todd with a shot. Peters covers up and holds it. Face off will be to his right. Justin Peters already down, angled the stick upwards on that shot from Brody Todd. Peters, he has played fairly well here tonight. Faced 31 shots, 28 saves in this game. Carolina, second round pick in this draft. Got to learn to apply his trade from another good one, Andy Kyoto. Colbert with a shot, that one almost fooled. Justin Peters got the pad out. And the puck is now in the corner, exactly where he kicked it. Todd working against Alex. Wilson in there for St. Mike's as well. And then we get a whistle, and the whistles are becoming quicker and quicker here in the last few moments. Captain Will Colbert. After the draw was won by Ottawa, gets a good shot on goal. It was tipped on the way there, but we've seen Peters work so well with those pads once he gets in that butterfly stance. He's able to kick those pads out with great quickness. And he makes another save just like that on that occasion on a good shot from Colburn. And oftentimes it's those shots that don't have a lot on them but are low that create rebounds that uh, end up in scoring chances. We don't know who is charged with the timeout. Well, the 67. There we go. They had the face off in the Toronto end. So Brian Kilray and company will see what they can't come up with here. 102 remaining in the period. And most of the chalkboard work though, Sam's going on at the Toronto bench right now. Yeah, and I don't think it's necessarily defensive zone coverage, but off the face off, if we get possession, Buzz the fancy saying, here's how I want to break out. We can take advantage of this situation. Turning a negative, the negative being having the face off on your own end with just a minute left, and trying to turn that negative into a positive by being able to use the draw as a breakout. And this should be a pretty good one. You've got two good centermen in Talbot and Adams out there. And yeah, they don't waste any time. Ottawa wins it. Colbert with a shot. That goes off the end glass. Boyce giving chase. Under a minute to go. Tied at three. Eastern Conference rivals. They've played for the Eastern Championship a couple of years back. Now trying to get back on track. There's Todd coming in front. Loose puck still there. Hewitt can't finish it. Puck goes to the corner. Boyce gets rid of the stick on his shoulder and then fires the puck the length of the ice. And that'll be icing against Toronto with 36 seconds to go. Tied at three in the third at the Corral in high def in Ottawa. What more do you want for a hockey game on a Sunday afternoon? Ryan Wilson was brilliant in scoring his fourth of the year, but here he's very lackadaisical with the puck, and it's just a simple flip that's picked off by Brody Todd, who now makes a couple of good moves before Wilson comes back and almost knocks it in his own net. Of course, who is there? Hewlett with another good scoring chance, his seventh in this game, but his shot can't find its way to the net. And now it's the Majors who will call a timeout. But you see, after that play, I think Todd took a slash in the arm. And 
is being tended to on the 67th bench right now. St. Mike's has called a timeout now. Hits the players back at the benches. 36 seconds to go. Shots 33-23 in favor of Ottawa, but they don't mean a darn thing right now. Other than that, there seems to be threes everywhere on that score clock. Third period, time of three. We'll give you another look. Uh, after Wilson had given over, that slash is what hurts Todd, but he still has the wherewithal to continue towards the net and realize once he, can't, once he doesn't score, now he's hurt. He's going to the bench. <laughs> Wilson trying to get back on the play. McKeever with the slash. And he took two good slashes off that left arm, did talk. Face off to the left of Peters. Petrosalic against Boyce. Boyce draws it back. Wilson on his backhand. And it'll be held by Peters for a face off. Now with 26.6 to go here in the third. Dan, you really need to take advantage if you're the majors when you win the face off. Julian Talbot, who had been taking most of the big face-offs who has now just come off the bench to take this one was winning most of the face-offs he was involved in. Daryl Boyce wins the draw on that occasion, but the majors can't do anything with it. And once again, Peters is forced to cover it up. Boyce to take the draw. This time it will be Talbot. Wins it. Now for Colbert. Chuck doesn't get through. Dangerous as Clutterbuck has a chance to move that puck forward. Can't do so. Vitarelli would have been gone. St. Mike's players were hoping for an icing call. Colbert with a busted stick has to head to the bench. And the faceoff will come back in the Toronto zone. An important, important call here with 9.8 seconds to go. You talk about faceoffs. Julian Talbot has been outstanding. He will take every important draw down the stretch. Here what he does just so quick. As soon as that puck is down, he times it so good that he's able to use the backhand to draw it back to Colbert. We've already seen that play work once with Colbert getting a shot on goal. Clutterbuck was out too quickly to defend on that occasion. Talbot and Boyce again on the faceoff. And even for anybody in minor hockey who thinks, you know, we spend a lot of time on faceoffs, and boy, this is boring facing off 50 times in practice. Even players at the National Hockey League level will spend a good half hour just doing nothing but taking face-offs just for situations like this. It was pretty good move by Boyce. He got down there before the linesman was to drop the puck against Talbot, and they battled back and forth for a minute before the linesman threw him out. Little did they know that referee Ian White was over at the box trying to determine how much time should be put on the clock. It's been set at 8.4 right now. I think that's where this face-off will take place. But we'll see here, once everything gets reset, if Talbot will be allowed back in to take that face off. Well, that's so important. He has been just outstanding on the draws in this game tonight. He's certainly standing in position as if he will be. No, he's not actually. Sorry, he's off to the left wing side. And that's what coaches will do. They'll put two centermen out there. You see, he's out there against Adams right now on that wing. They've adjusted the clock from 8.4 to 7.8 now. 7.8 seconds remain on the clock. We're still trying to get that figured out. Now, but Stefanski calling Vitarelli over to the bench. May as well take advantage of the situation, have your whole team come over to the bench and get the play worked out. Referee still trying to sort this out. The clock now up to 59.2 seconds. We can guarantee you that's not how much time remains here in the period. Down to 9.6. There we go. I think we got it set now. Went back, looked at the tape, and realized there was 9.6 seconds left. So that's where we'll go. And Talbot will tried, not be allowed in the tried, drive. Tried to scam him, but yeah. it didn't work. Tried to sneak in there. <laughs> but for Zalek, nice move. Wound up taking the draw. Five seconds to go. The majors don't clear. Back in the oh. way. Peters a save. Oh, what a giveaway with 1.5 seconds to go. Peters covers up. Good intentions on the part of Ryan Wilson. He had time. He had space. But he didn't have any wood or synthetic material, whatever you want to call it, on this wrist shot that he was just trying to clear the zone with. And again, that's why as a forecheck, you 
this 1-2-2 two, two, four check, if you will, allows for that turnover to happen. You have Petrozalic down low and then two others back in case he can't get it out. Ottawa with the goaltender out with a very minuscule amount of time left on the clock, just enough for the faceoff. And nothing comes of that. And we will have an overtime period tied at three through regulation. Well, we were tied at deuces after two. Then Wilson opens the scoring with his fourth at the 145 mark. Just over six minutes later, it's Cashbar picking up his 12th. And a little more than what we bargained here for today. It's been a pretty good hockey game. These teams have traded 4-1 victories with the Majors winning at home back in October and, of course, Ottawa winning 4-1 at the Civic Center Friday night. It all started back in the first period when John Adams lets it go in a hurry, beating Danny Vitaccio for his sixth. That made it 1-0 Toronto. Lucas Cashbar responded after a terrible turnover, sliding it through Justin Peters, his 11th, to tie it at one. And then Ivanov in a power play, his first ever OHL goal. That's where we stood after one period of play, 2-1 Toronto. We move to the second period. Julian Talbot has been so good on face-offs this year, able to great, get the great pass from Brody Todd and bury his eighth. To tie it at two, we move to the third period. Ryan Wilson looking a lot like Bobby Orr. He loses one check, then one other good move before going five hole on Danny Battaccio, his fourth of the year. Three two majors, but at the 7 11 mark of that third period, Lucas Kashbar and Jacob Petrozalic play catch. It's Kashbar finishing it off with his 12th second of the game. And that's it. All the scoring in this game. Three goals apiece, and we've got a couple extra minutes to try and figure this one out. We've seen a lot of hits this afternoon as well, and we've seen basically when you, you take a look at those goals, I mean, that's what it's all about in junior hockey as well as the NHL, but the little mistakes that are made out there have cost both teams. Dale Good with the giveaway, also allowing Ryan Wilson on the Ottawa end to walk right in on net like he did. And, and the first two goals, Dan, yep. back in that first period were both as a result of the defenseman giving the puck away. We saw it a couple of times in the third period. Those are the types of things that will force coaches either to go gray or, or to lose their hair completely. Well, Justin Peters told us yesterday he hadn't played his A game yet this year, and he felt like he needed to here this afternoon to start this thing going in the right direction for Toronto. He has certainly kept his team in the game, faced 34 shots to this point, and Danny Batacchio, 23. Little first goal wins here for the next five minutes. Ottawa with the first shot on net. Just 12 seconds into the extra frame, it's Derek Jocelyn, the defenseman, who starts the rush. And any time you can have possession in a 4 and 4 situation as a result of the face-off, your chances of winning the game are pretty good. That's exactly what happened. Ottawa wins the draw. Jocelyn starts it going. Chris Hewitt, who's been robbed on several occasions in this game, comes through for his team in the end and when it counts most. See off the draw. Ottawa is able to pick it up. Jocelyn jumps right up on the play. Good recognition on his part. Makes one move. Now it's two St. Mike's defenders out of position. And this is a shot Justin Peters really has to stop. From that bad of an angle, Chris Hewlett's shot should be stopped. But the wrist shot goes short side, off the shoulder. It trickles through Justin Peters for the game winner. So the guy who was acquired in the trade just a couple of weeks back, or just a week back, rather, is able to win it for the 67s. Well, that is not the A game Justin Peters wanted to bring. The 67s win it in overtime here on the net. The Ontario Hockey League on Rogers Sportsnet. Brought to you by Subway. Eat fresh. An overtime win for the Ottawa 67s here at the Corral Center in what was a home game for the Toronto St. Michaels Majors. But the struggles continue offensively for Toronto. Those struggles, of course, do not continue for Chris Hewlett and the rest of the Ottawa 67s. Dan Dunleavy and Sam Cosentino with you right now. And Chris Hewlett and company played a whale of a game offensively for Ottawa here today. Yeah, I can't believe how many scoring chances Hewlett had in this game. And it's... Uh... Always a situation where you wonder how quick a guy can adjust to his new teammates, and Hewlett uh, seemingly has uh, adjusted pretty well. Well, let's ask the man himself. Chris Hewlett joins us downstairs. Chris, congratulations on the game-winning goal and the effort. Uh, talk about, first of all, uh, the game winner. Well, I mean, just 
Got a great pass from Jocelyn there. Just went in the side of the net and just put the puck on net and good things happen. You had a lot of good chances in this game. Uh, you seem to be finding good chemistry with your new teammates. Oh, for sure. I mean, I grew up playing against Talbot uh, all through Ben. I mean, he played for Sudbury. I played for the Sioux. And I mean, it, it, it was great coming here, playing for him, playing with him. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for me. Talk a little bit, Chris, as well, about playing. We talked with Nathan McKeever, the opportunity to play here at the Corral Centre. I know you probably get that chance a little more than St. Mike's with their once-a-year appearance here in this building, but uh, it's got to feel pretty good, given the fact there's no NHL hockey out here right now. You were the show this afternoon. Did you feel it? Oh, I mean, it's great playing in front of all these fans. I mean, I came from Oshawa, where the fan base is only about 4,000 I mean, maximum, and in coming here, I mean, it's great playing in front of 10,000 people. I mean, it's, it's a high. Obviously, it helps, helps out a lot. You talk about the switching teams. Were you at all shocked when the deal was made? Well, I mean, they told me all year I wasn't going to get traded, and then all of a sudden I get a phone call about 1 o'clock in the afternoon about on Thursday and told me I'm Delta Auto. I mean, I was a little nervous at first coming, uh, meeting new guys, changing teams after four years in Oshawa, but, I mean, it was a great opportunity for me. I mean, playing under Killeray and a great Ottawa team, so it's, it's great for me. Well, tell us, uh, playing for Brian Kilray, it's very early for you. You've certainly played against teams of his. You know how well prepared they are. You know their tradition of winning here in Ottawa. Uh, there is that same tradition in Oshawa, as you know very well. But talk about uh, maybe what Brian has said to you in the early stages, if anything at all. Well, I mean, I came to the team. I, I met him on Friday night before, before the game, and he just told me to play my game. He just told me to come in, keep doing what I was doing in Oshawa, and I'll, and I'll fit in well here. Well, Chris, congratulations again on a fantastic game this afternoon. Best of luck throughout the rest of the season. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. There is Chris Hewlett joining us here at the Corral Center in Ottawa. The CHL on Rogers Sportsnet continues. Our coverage tonight will shift scenes to Oshawa, Ontario. Sarnia taking on the Generals tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then, of course, later this week, the story in junior hockey. Can the London Knights do it? Can they set the new CHL record for consecutive games without a defeat. Boy, the Guelph Storm, of course, would love to be the team to trip them up and not let that happen. 7.30 Eastern Time Friday night for that game here on the net. Jim Van Horn is standing by with Sportsnet News at the top of the clock. We invite you to join us for that here on the net. Di Benedetto and the St. Mike's Majors came into battle. Colbert and the Ottawa 67s. Ivanoff and company looked good early. But it just didn't happen for Toronto this afternoon as they fall 4-3 in overtime here at the Corral Center. Sean McCormick is standing by at the Sportsnet News studios. Good afternoon from the Corral Center in Ottawa. You've been watching the OHL on Rogers High Definition Sportsnet.